Alright, I'll make a game for Hulk Leave. In the meantime, chat, let's talk about... Unless he has it up already, let me check. Nope. Call it Ziggy Trade. Was like seven. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Welcome, Hulk Leave. So yeah, Chan, what, what did you want to do today? It's rare week, so technically this is the time you're supposed to do TTF and RT. Technically. I think I did math correctly there. Yeah, I did. I suppose check the shop to see if there's anything interesting in here. 50 hit Gagush, new special. 50 hit Ice Partisan, oof. I'm starting to see more 50 hits there at least. Yeah, so Hellcleave's gonna help me out with the Twin Blaze. My RNG luck with it has been so bad, Chad, you have no idea. Or if he says I'm wrapping up in Minecraft pretty much ready whenever I wouldn't mind a slew of TTF or RR attempts. Yeah, I had a feeling most people would probably just say TTF. And that's the honest statement. I'm okay with it. This character needs to level. So if I end up getting Twin Blaze, I will literally immediately begin using it in multiplayer TTF. I'll cleave gathering strength. See, it sounds like we're leaning towards TTF. Let's see, who wants to do runs today? Welcome, Adrius. Hope you're doing well. Okay, no problem, Hulk Leave. Oh, Hulk Leave with the JK. Oh, just get Brave Man? Is that with Machine? Ooh, Red Sword, nice. Oh, a Galatine. You know what makes me sad, chat? For those that missed it before, I gave a I'm pretty sure I gave away a 20 hit Galatine or a 30 hit Galatine before they made the Galatine changes. That was one of the saddest moments ever. I want you to know, chat. <laughs> Because it was literally useless before the update, because I would never play in the right time zone. So 20 hit, I think I'm going to give to you, Kassil. This Twin Blaze is his. Galatine will be a floater, I think. Let me go ahead and upgrade. I'll put away his, uh, his good Rayman. man. So sad, chat. So, I, I would have literally, I think I literally got like 12 of them before. I own zero. I was like, man... Because I, I used to do green ID hunts all the time. That was back when the Fomar... Yeah, that was back when I was still playing Fomar. Fomar was like 150 when I got it, chat. Like, think about it this way. He's like 197 right now. That was back when he was 150. I feel sad every time. Because I know he got a million of them, and I didn't pick any of them up. And since then, I've not won the Lotto. <laughs> Lotto denied. It's just, it's an actual heartbreaker moment. So I don't need to worry about it dropping, quote unquote. I've had it drop before. There we go. Get a little boosted twin blaze there. And thank you, Hulkly, for helping fix that situation. And sadly, I just keep getting Disco Brave Man with hit, but not with machine percentage. So this will end up being his boss killer. So I have like a I think like five percent more accuracy than the previous one, but more importantly, twenty five machine. What did they change with Anguish? Yeah, unfortunately they condensed it down. So Anguish 1, I don't know if it's closer to 1 or 2. I'm not sure if Chad has the numbers in front of him. The one in between is kind of like 5 or 6-ish, and then the other one is unplayable and I don't care. <laughs> I don't know if it's Anguish 9 or it was Anguish 10. I actually missed the scale. For those that used to watch me play, I played Anguish 4 box runs on Hugh Cassiel, Anguish 3 on every other character, and this is closer to Anguish 1, so my box runs got hard nerfed for sure. Yeah, they got hard nerfed compared to how I used to play it. Like, the fact that he's landing hits on them, I'm like, there's no way. This is the same Anguish I played it on, as I never played Anguish 1 box runs. I always ran it higher. Unless they're under level, then I ran Anguish 2. So maybe it's similar to Anguish 2 at best, but there's no way it's as good as Anguish 3, Anguish 4. But anyway, um, I guess I'll just make a game. So 
but people want to do some TTF, let me know. That's going to walk dramatically to the counter. Yeah, I think the problem was when I kept checking it over the weekend, there were no updates on it, and the patch notes also didn't say what was removed from them. I'll cleave let other people fill in first. So let me know, chat. We're setting up a... Well, I mean, in theory, you know what? I am actually not scared of Anguish 1 TTF. I'm going to be real with you. I actually don't think I care about that. This character is so stupid. Do whatever. Yeah, it feels somewhere... It felt closer to Anguish 2. I don't know if it was better, though. Adrius is here to say hi. No problem. So I think Murphy's in. I think Dango probably wants in. Gotta get Dango some... Uh, Parasitic gene flow at some point. So I don't mind switching over to Hugh New World for that. But I figured this character just got a new weapon, I might as well just try it out. Yeah, so I found at least something good there. Yeah, it's like, I, I kind of didn't have a sense for some of them. Oh, they found Red Ring, nice. Aether Drift saying it would be cool to get in on TTF at some point. Sure thing, Aether. I don't think we've gamed together on stream, at least not recently. You're more than welcome to hop in. I believe you were looking to join potentially a guild. You're more than welcome to join the stream chat one, of course. So anyway, game is up in block two. Password is king. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was I was kind of okay. I I must have shifted the numbers in my head. One of them did look like a six. The dang goes in. I mean, the sad part is. Honestly, with like very light stun locking, I can probably still destroy this. Also, I need to get a red handgun with machine. I think I might farm that on this side. It it is technically a good quest to go pick it up. Oh, thank you for that. I'm gonna put this in the character bank. Oh, I already moved it to character. I forgot I did that. Yeah, because he's got a 50 hit red sword. The 20 hit is more for the Hugh Seal, because I think she's one that has literally nothing. And great she is. No worries, Murphy. We'll give Murphy another minute or so. So we still have a free slot for anybody that wants to hop in. Got about a minute or so. I'm just double checking some items before we get started. Oh, actually. Chat, I'm a filthy liar. I have a red ring. <laughs> I miscounted them again. I, it's like nebulous to me. Do I have seven? Do I have eight? Well, this character just needs levels, I guess. Because Rawcast already has it. Oh, you know what it is? It's between the Hugh Newell and this character. Never mind, I didn't miscount. She still needs to uh, get one, or he needs to get one, depending on who levels first. They have an okay Daylight Scar here. No worries, Aether. At some point, I'm going to lock the lame to Argent, so we might have a bonus stream of me playing a game while uh, playing another game. I think we're overdue for that. So it sounds like it's hell cleaving time. Yeah, Lava's Cannon's kind of nice. The 25 hit Rhianov actually wasn't too bad. I'm glad we got to experiment with that. But yeah, damage he deals, dumb. For those that are not aware of the lore of this character, I only used him for a little bit. Originally, he was going to be used for uh, potentially Seal J sword hunts, and then I looked at the rare rate and gave up. Uh, but I always wanted to do episode 4 surface with him, and he always kind of had like a little bit of trouble, where it's like... He just kind of sat there with, like, no-hit items. And he was just kind of okay-ish. And, like, he levels very well, so the more levels you get, the easier it becomes. But then, like, he went on a hiatus. I want to say it was close to, like, level 110. He went on a hi hiatus. 
And then from 110 to almost 140, all of that has been box runs. <laughs> Just for clarity, he did not do a single other quest other than the box reset run we saw earlier. He has since gained maybe about 5 or 6 levels from things like Cookie Quests and CTF. But in order to get him to the point where I thought he felt good, which was about 140-ish, it was purely box runs. So I am very sad though that Anguish did get nerfed, at least in terms of my options for it. So if you're wondering, chat, yes, you can level that way. Yes, it is hilarious when it was in like Hunter Boost Road slash RVR. It still technically can go in the RVR. And yes, the XP is very stupid when you have V502. I love that it was getting like 130, 140 XP a second on that quest. Like it made no sense while doing box checks. Sadly, I don't think I got any items of interest from box runs so far. I think we're at a we're at a big zero. I mean, I got money from it, which I guess is you know the side upgrade, I guess. If you're also wondering why I have so much money, it was uh, leveling this character and also leveling the Huka Seal. Sure thing, Murphy. Is plus five the max for Raygun? I never actually bothered to check. I looked at that and I'm like, hmm. Yeah, this character is such a damage carry. He doesn't have a Dark Flow. Yeah, it's, I feel like it should be higher. I'm just gonna pick up some of these and let Math figure it out. Here's how it works. We'll sort our inventory. We have Red Hand Gun for the spinners. We have Charge Ray Gun for the boss. I technically can stun lock like a madman with this gun. Because I have like 1400 ATP. Although I think I want to see what the other abilities do. I want to check one thing before we get started. Sorry again for the delay. I wanted to see if there was anything interesting in the beginning area for Sky ID. No, not really. Okay. We're good. I just- I was just curious about that. I was curious if it was worth killing the Bartles. Sadly, there's no Grass Assassins, because I would also like a Red Dagger at some point. I think I got one a very long time ago, and I think I accidentally scrapped it. I don't think I own it anymore. It was not an intentional scrap. I think I thought it was something else. I don't even think I put it in, like, team points. I think I just got confused what it was. And that damage is so silly. They're running away from me. I'm like, come back to me. Love I just see like 1100 damage or something when I'm specialing. There it is. Speaking of that, two 1200. Perfectly normal damage. What a character. Also, for chat clarity, I don't care if you heal me. I don't know if other people- yeah, it doesn't matter. Just... I'm not using Dark Flow. I, I honestly don't feel like he needs it so far. Which is really funny because I do feel like it opened up the run for the other hunters. But for him, he does so much damage that it's like, uh... I mean, I guess it's nice if he has it, but he wins without it. He cast is in a league of his own, for sure. I mean, I'm doing on average 1500 a heavy attack combo. If I get any crits, it's like 1800. I mean, watch this damage. Goodbye. He's so blind, he can't heavy, heavy special special. Yeah, he can't. I can barely normal heavy heavy the boss with a 50 hit vice. It is quite sad. I mean, I don't get anything from slime duping, but I think I'm probably gonna slime dupe and let the team clear up everything else. I mostly just do this for PDs. If chat is wondering whether or not it's paid off, the answer is yes. I've gotten two PDs so far today from slime duping. So I'm like, I might as well as do it. Also, the sad part is he's also kind of underleveled, so it requires a lot of flame traps. 
I thought that was a PD, I'm not gonna lie. I was gonna get excited. Uh... Don't mind me, just freezing for the group. Anyone free for the team invite? Uh, probably after this game, either. I don't know if any of the other people that normally can do it are here. I don't think they are. I don't see Chris. But if you're in the lobby after this game, we'll just pick you up real quick. So anyway, time to slime dupe. One, two, three. Uh-oh. Somebody pulled them weirdly. That's fine. Hopefully this will kill them. Normally they're more grouped around me. Uh, That's actually kind of annoying. Yeah, they're too split. Rip. Yeah, so if people run through it, it will cause them to uh, not group properly. Whatever, I gotta give up on the slime dupe. Not most of them at least though. Nice, invincibility. Anyway, time to play delete a boss. Yum. Yum. <laughs> Just a casual like 5k per Jaya, it's fine. If I crit, it's like 7k. Cause it's like 1900 I think per and I can hit 5 targets. So it really just depends on how many crit, honestly. What a character. Ooh, it's a lore. Oh, that's perfect actually. I'm still playing like Anniversary Event with the- <laughs> Did you see how fast they're deleting each other? Holy. That is disgusting how fast they damage each other with Zalur. Wow, Murphy made that strategy way OP. We got like three free kills just from one Zalur. There you go, chat. If you're wondering if Zalur helps, that uh, that was like an instant delete of those enemies. Normally I have to kind of like shoot them a little. Yeah, nice try, Kennebins. I think I'm getting pretty used to the freeze trap timing here, so I don't have to shoot the freeze trap. I feel kind of proud of it. Also, chat, by the way, I'm killing the Barans. We're, we're skipping the Sinnohs, we don't need to kill those. But the Barans, I'm absolutely gonna murder. What a character. Funk. Oh, somebody's not on switch duty. Yeah, the reason we killed the brands, just for clarity. Normally we skip them in other runs. They're Sincestas for brands. So I guess it's time to twin blaze. I'm gonna try to stun it. Someone will help assist me with the monitors. <laughs> I don't really care who. Twin Blaze damage should be so high. What's the best way to get to that switch? Ask Daddy for sure. So there's two things you could do. Give me a moment to concentrate on the angle here. Okay, I think we're good. So there's two things I think you could do in order to do the switch quickly. So one, if you have a cast, you freeze trap and you walk past. There's a little square we always touch in order to make sure we hit all the brands. You could do that to freeze them, and you can run by, potentially, and bazooka the wall. Or, wow, that was so fast. Or, potentially, if there's enough people, you could burst the Barans as somebody else focuses the dub chick. A force can potentially zap the switch as it falls. Are you talking about for single player or multiplayer? Single player, you can't get away with that, unless you have a Kenan Rouge. Holy the damage. Hello. Free Dango. Ooh. See, this also, chat, this is why you always wait for box drops. 
Look at that. I don't think I have any escape dolls. I should probably take a couple. In single player, if I'm a ranger, I just run for it. You don't technically need to freeze trap. I recommend it if you're playing a group to freeze trap. That's about it. Another escape doll, jeez. What a safe run. Yeah, you, you don't wait for it to drop. That's the thing, Daddy, for sure. Do you have a cannon rouge? Because if you have a cannon rouge... Oh, wait, that's right. We're if he's here. I don't need to do this. Oh, yeah, get a cannon rouge. If you're a ranger. If you're any other character, you have to just kind of deal with the brands. I don't think there's a way to hit it. I don't think you can hit it with kunai, for example. Which is usually a really good option. Leave that indie bell real quick. Put a freeze trap down. If you're like a hunter, you could try to freeze. You could try to... F oh, actually, we should kill these. Yeah, Deldies drop a uh, Lavis Cannon, I think. Uh, now we're out of here. Chat confirming that is the case. So yeah, for hunters, you usually have to deal with it. Well, well that's the thing. The, the switch doesn't drop until you defeat the dub chick. So if you're killing the Barans, you don't you don't have to do that. And if you have a Cannon Rouge, you don't even fight the Barans in single player. You skip them completely. You shoot the wall where the switch is. So if you're wondering why that is, uh, if you don't fight the dub chick to make the switch lower, that would be why. Ooh, that is a confusing color array. That's okay. Uh, it's the darker of the robots. So the dub... It's called a dub witch for the dub switch. I call it dub switch, but I'm pretty sure it's just dub witch is the name of the switch. So it's associated with the immortal robots that keep coming back. So once you kill them, then they stop coming back. But that's tied to the door opening. I was very distracted talking to chat, my bad. Normally I'm good at dodging that, but I was looking at chat. <laughs> I was like, oops. My bad. Hot peeking when I need to be looking at the minimap. Yeah, ready for the, the saddest series of misses you're ever gonna see. There it is. See all those misses? Disgusting. Why am I missing so much? 82% chat. He misses he misses like one in three. It's so disgusting. Yeah, but it, it so an alternative way. So that was method one. We talked about freeze trapping and potentially getting by safer. Uh, method two is you confuse trap if you're by yourself, and you leave the room and you let the brands kill each other. So that way they, that way you don't have to deal with that room at all, and that works on any difficulty. Oh, I missed one of the specials. That sucks. I think I could get the kill here. Nice. Thank you, who cast. <laughs> Just casual 1200 damage attacks with charge ray gun. Very fair weapon. See ya. So those are the methods you could use to deal with it. It's usually pre preferable to use freeze traps. But, you know, it kind of is what it is sometimes. Ooh, 1135. That's a pretty good run. And that was with messing around with LDs. <laughs> Hello, Cleave. I'm so sad. <laughs> I see that item sitting on the floor. That 50 hit caliber with nothing to justify using it. It's so sad. Oh, what a waste of an item. 
I guess if I want a 50 hit Master Caliber, I could go pick it up. The Sky Love, yeah. So for those that don't know, the, uh, certain IDs are associated with certain common weapons. So it is weighted in your favor to see certain items. So you'll see Calibers a little more with Sky ID. As an example. So we are more likely to see calibers. Downside, we see terrible calibers most of the time. So sad. Yeah, that was a pretty fast uh, boss on phase one for Vault Up. The Twin Blaze helps a lot. It even has 15% machine, which is disgusting. Oh, I think the music gave up. Give me a second. So if you're there, Aether Drift, let me know which character you are. Are you IXO? Is it going to add an invite or something real quick? Just Aether, sure thing. So I'll wait a moment or so for you to join block two. Oh, I see Aether. There we go. Welcome to the team, Aether. Let's do a TTF. There we go. Now you have access to things like Point of Disaster, Minor Quests, some Cosmetics. So if you want to change your character's look and feel, bring money for the changing room. Sure, Murphy's also happy just to get hard carried as the force. He's like, listen, this character's got to hit like 170, then he can Excalibur easily. It's, <laughs> but someone has to help deal with the damage in the meantime. Honestly, I'm kind of thinking in that first room, even without um, even without me waiting around in it, I think if all the Bartles get debuffed, I think that's just free kills. Yeah, no worries, Murphy. I understand the pain of leveling the Fulmar all too well. He's like, listen, I'm gonna be like pure episode 4, then at like... I literally didn't even enjoy him until 180, then I put a red ring on and I'm like, oh. Now I'm having a good time. <laughs> I finally have something to compensate his absolutely atrocious accuracy. And then all was right with the world. Because until then, it's just kind of like... It's kind of like, even if you hit exactly 800 ATP, it feels terrible. Because it's like, the whole benefit of the Fomar is that he's got more ATP than the other forces, but until you level to that point, he just feels like worse Phonuman. <laughs> it's like, big oof. <laughs> Once you get past that, it's not too bad. We're waiting on Dango. I'm assuming Dango's just exchanging some things. Exactly. 800, like, you can use the X-Cal, but it feels terrible. Especially on Fulmar, because he's got no accuracy. Yeah, it's not like he could really kill much with it when he first gets it. He's never landing special without Red Ring. Unless you're in, like, Forest. Or someone mercy freezes something, maybe you'll land a special in Forest. Maybe. Multiplayer. Yeah, this S parts has been such a quality of life for this character. Do little zigzags. Normal, normal, heavy with 30s of lore and solo. Yeah, pretty much. That sounds pretty accurate. Um, so 
we'll check again to see if Dango's willing to join us. Yeah, or just be who casts, exactly. Yeah, he, he was one of the characters where I think he was like, I think it was level 72, and he was able to wield Excalibur or something stupid while I was leveling this character. And I'm like, man, could you imagine? Could you imagine if a force you could have used that at like 72? It was hilariously low, I will put it that way. I was not at ultimate when this character first used Excalibur. I was just like, wow, what a character. You cast ATP strong? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's the that's the plus side. I don't feel like he had like as big of a downtime as some of the other characters. Like a few Hugh, I feel like Hugh Castile took a while. Yeah, because he used it at like 72 with uh his level up materials. He wasn't even using power level materials. So like I'm pretty sure I pretty I could have gotten that at like 60 something easy. No worries, Dango. So yeah, I think we'll see. I'll let Murphy Zalore the first room here. I want to see if they all die to a confused trap. These enemies notoriously don't do a lot of damage to each other. If that happened to Talos, Talos die really fast to confused traps comparatively. I'm gonna wait for them to spawn. So I'm just gonna... Yeah, there we go. Nice Glide Divine. I'm just gonna put a Confused Trap down or two and see how fast they die. Oh yeah, that's so much better. So without even needing to assist, they should die. A couple of them should anyway. That's not too bad. <laughs> I just want you to know I was shaking my head at my 1500 crit. What a character. Nyeom. Hold on, chat, just hitting the delete button real quick. Nyeom. So anyway, if you have any doubts whether or not Hugh Cass was top tier, my response to you is Nyeom. All you need to do is just get some weapons with hit and it's over. His only weakness really is accuracy. So now that he is quote-unquote solved with that, that might kill me. Oh, I got lucky. Invincibility. But I mean, like, otherwise, he does so much damage, at, even at, like, 130-something. He's able to kill Dragon before it lifts off. And, like, now that I'm 150-something, it's hilarious. So we're gonna do Heavy Special, which should do, like, three-quarters of the boss's health. Or Bazooka will do that. Bazooka will finish. So yeah, we'll, we'll walk, up, I guess, towards the exit. I lose a bit of time if PDs do show up there. Yeah, Hugh Cast. Hugh Cast doesn't care about the rules. His big problem, as I said before, is just accuracy. See, this is, this is why you wait at least for the boxes to open. I saw nothing of interest on draw for me, I think, from the boxes. Oh, uh, they spawned over there. That's kind of unfortunate. One, two, three. I might die from that, yeah. That's kind of the downside. If they get pulled really early, I don't know how to fix it when that happens. Yeah, I don't think it's worth uh, duping him now. Yeah, and he died anyway. That's the downside, because like his spawn box is like really far, and he was basically at a spawn box, so I couldn't do anything there. Unfortunate. Defense material, that's fine. So. Alright, so let's go for go back to slime duping, but for real. Uh, once they're split, I don't think it matters. Yeah, now that I'm pulled, you can run by safely. It should be fine. There we go. That's a lot of kills. And they're killing the Volmer that opens the door. So I have like near perfect timing with it. So 
that's why I like to slime dupe. I might as well. I mean, it gives... There's more enemies there than if I'd stayed in the other rooms. The only one where I would arguably get similar kills is if there's like a... Like a lily check or nano check. Then I might do the, the lily room. The first one. Or technically the second one. But with that many slimes... It'd be very silly. Yeah, I'm not even at max ATP. That's a good point in parameter. Um, haven't even seen his true potential yet firsthand. He just did 6,000. Nasty. Just think. He could also get red ring. I think with the S parts, I'm having a lot more fun with him. He's missing a whole lot less. Oh, the moment these things get to Lord, it's over. Oh, look at the damage they do to each other. Look at that. Wow, that was like a room wipe almost. Disgusting. And again, I might as well kill those, just for PD chances. Some characters actually get useful items from the guild chicks. Sadly, I don't think this is one of the characters that gets anything interesting off of them. Take the telepipe though. Nice room cleanup. So that's an example where you, if the room, if we're basically waiting on somebody to go to the far room anyway, we might as well spend like an extra second or so to deal with them. Might have been a little too early. Yeah, slightly too early. My bad. So the, the timing trick for that is wait for his graphic to appear. Once his graphic appears, you can just kill him. So I, I did it before the graphic appeared. So here's where you would freeze trap. And you can pause trick to get through them a little easier. But yeah, this character's DPS is so disgusting. So technically, we can have a ranger just go to the next area. I could kill these if I need to. Hopefully I do not need to do so. So once that's down, that makes the other switch fall. Might as well just kill these for the team. Nice. Back to Twin Blaze. So not the cleanest room, but we'll take it. Yeah, honestly, like a really well-placed freeze trap and good positioning. You could kill all three Barans with just mech guns, or if you're low on health because you have Dark Flow, you could literally one-shot the Barans. We've seen Tiggy do that before. It's very dumb. Good angle? Kind of? good enough. In single player, it's gonna be so fun. <laughs> so we'll do for... We'll do heavy special special, see how much damage we do. Holy... Boss is dead. <laughs> oh my gosh. The boss actually melts. That is so sad. So yeah, I think uh, I think I'm learning a better strat with the hunters. I think it was Hellcle that told me to do it. I don't think it's right side so much. It's more just making sure I spin around them. So if I'm in the, even if I'm like second in the room, I have a pretty good strat to deal with them. Also, here's the funny thing: if I freeze trap these, I could potentially confuse trap them later, and they'll all kill themselves. Yeah, that seemed fair. Actually, you know what? Arlen's don't drop me anything. It's the other ID. Red ID drops good stuff for Arlen. I think that's your spread needle chance or something. Or it's Discovery Man. Might be Discovery Man. What a character. You could combo kill Indie Bell Rose. If I normal heavy special there, that would have killed, by the way. I should have just gone for it to showcase it.
by Delvius. I don't really want to deal with the Darkbringer, so I'm going through here. Yeah, like, other characters would need, like, special handguns in order to kill the spinners, like, potentially Master Raven or Last Swan. So they don't have, like, enough roll ATP to, like, single shot the target. Uh, that's not a problem for you cast. Spoilers! <laughs> like, I'm landing my single normal to kill Spinner here. Just bonk. So as long as we stay on the northern side, we should be fine. Rip Murphy. We want to make sure we stay close because we don't have any good range options. So we want to be able to vice things. And if I'm like all the way out here, for example, to get this kill, it can be very risky. Because it puts me in a very bad position to damage the boss. Steps matter. I'd like to kill the boss around here if I can. Uh, I hope this... Okay, that's fine. So we'll still do our job. We'll try to kill like four or five spinners every time. That's not a bad position. I'm like past the middle head, which is where I want to be. I should be close to the side head. Yeah, I'm pretty close. So in the time it takes us to swap, I want to make sure that I'm in range, and I am. That's good enough. <laughs> I saw my mech gun bullets come from the side there. I had supporting fire from myself. I think that was the first time ever I have not whiffed on that boss phase. Wow. That was just rude. There's the misses. Nice dodge from Murphy. I'm gonna dodge this way. Bad dodge direction. I didn't see the other spinner. That's so sad. I'm gonna go revive the team. Ooh, I can get Murphy in time. I got Dango. I used the item, but I must have just been in the cutscene. So I'm gonna damage the boss, and then I'm gonna go find Murphy. Because we need the Zalore in order to fast cycle this boss. Oh, I'm out of range anyway. That was a bad, bad movement for me. Yeah, that Zalore is worth it. Yeah, unfortunately, Dango needs... There we go. Ooh, thank you, Charge Ray Gun. I wasn't sure if this... But I, didn't, I did special special there. I wasn't sure if they were going to hit, but they both hit. That makes up for a lot of damage, because if I power attack, it's like 500. If I hit charge, it's like 1200. So being able to squeeze in an extra 1400 makes a big difference in whether or not we have to go another cycle. Team cleaned it up nicely, though. Good job, team. Good recovery. Oh, somebody got red ring. Hey! Congrats, Murphy. There we go. Red ring is red ring. <laughs> That paid off. B has found Red Ring. I think I saw Huckley mentioning he bought 150 for shared bank. Nice. I'm gonna go until we at least level with this character. So we'll go for at least two more TTFs, then we'll switch it over, I think. That's my goal. <laughs> Every time I play, I want to make sure the character gets at least one level before I swap them. I 
feel like that's an okay amount of chances for uh, Red Ring. Smiles on Hunter's droids. I feel like my luck rate didn't change even though it says your fortune has changed. Or you had a change of fortune, excuse me. I feel like it's still 128%. Some things never change, I guess. Already up two PDs, which is a good sign. I'm almost capped at the bank again. <laughs> two more PDs and I cap. <laughs> I'm ready for challenge mode in the future. I do need a lot of them for challenge mode, potentially. Because it's like, what, between 50 and potential 40 and 60, I think, is the average range. So I'll be getting at least one Zalora gun. A couple of Hells. It's like Hell Slicer. Demon Mech. Maybe Needle Hell? We'll see. I haven't decided if I really wanted to do Episode 2. Challenge mode. I'm on the fence. Yeah, we need to get Dango that Parasitic Gene Flow. But might as well as roll for the, the Hugh Cast army of Red Rings. How Cleave needs to feed his army. But yeah, if there's anybody waiting to play, please let us know. Oh yeah, I forgot. I should actually check these boxes. I have gotten PDs from those. Is somebody going back for the PD in there? That'd be funny. Yup. <laughs> Do you see that, chat? I love that I'm, like, vindicated instantly. I'm like, let me go just do the box check, and then bam, and I did the- I got- It like, wastes a little bit of time, but like, I feel like more often than not, someone in a group of four gets an item from it. It's very silly. Oh, we're almost done with the soundtrack. I'll just switch it after this boss. So yeah, I think with us grinding TTF, Dango might hit 200 before he gets Parasitic Gene Flow. We'll see. If he was purely doing Parasitic Gene Flow, I would say no way. Fortunately, he has like 15 to 20 attempts, I think, on the last level. We should, in theory, get it statistically before then, still. Even at 195. The last 10 levels being, like, at least 50% of the progression is very funny. And nothing of interest there. You won! See where the slime is going. Uh, that might be workable. One, two, three. I think I can do this. Now they could just die. Should kill. See, I found the magic number is if I have fi if I have nine fire traps, it always kills at my level. It'll change obviously depending on what level your character is, but. I just like looking at that as my visual cue. Set up a nice freeze trap for the team there. We'll try to help where we can. One, two, three, dupin' time. So now Murphy could come in safely since they've already been duped. Dango finding photon drops, good sign. a little behind that time. All the pipe is up. Soundtrack is over. Let's switch to Super Bomberman on the SNES. 
Goodbye, DS Bomberman. Oh, I don't have invincibility. That was dumb. Punished hard. <laughs> that was so fast. Poor boss. Boss is just actively being farmed by the party. Dragon Slayer. I wish that was stronger, for sure. Put that in the pupper carry, though. Oh, they're- oh, they're super dead. GG. They got hit by the Murphy's allure. It's over. Look at that! <laughs> they're, they're already down to one. I barely did anything. Actually silly. Uh, so as long as I don't pre freeze trap too early, we should be good. Yeah, that enemy is actually just a normal heavy to us. Seriously? Wow, if, if body block- Stop body blocking me! Stop it! Go away. You know what? I'll kill you out of, out of annoyance. Wow, the triple movement back to back to block me is insane. A little late on freeze trap here, but this should still be fine. I'm still in the position to shoot. That's all that ultimately matters. I'd rather be late than early with that. Ooh, chat going in before me is a decision to make. Very brave of them. I was not in a good position for that. How dare I actually have to trap shoot. So dead. I do like that this character doesn't need dark flow at all. What a character. Here soon, fortunately. There we go. Got through there eventually. Of how Cleves Baran's launcher just pointing at the camera. He's just casually threatening the audience. I'm not even gonna free Hulk leave, it's over. Oh, it's Dango, my bad. I guess I should heal. Team starting the fight without me. It's fine, I'll put a little freeze trap down. Oh nice, I got a random heal. That's always fun. Honestly, I think I'm just gonna confuse trap them here. Enjoy our lens. Yeah, I got a couple Arlen kills for free. Thanks to Zalor. I do like that Confused Trap is still mostly relevant. Love it in single player. Little Freeze Trap here, little Freeze Trap here. Now we run. Red hand gun it up. We 
idea. It feels good. I, this is a character, like, I enjoy playing them, but at the same time, I couldn't see myself wanting to gear up, like, eight of them. I just feel like it's easier to gear up the raw cast comparatively. And he's got better options. But it's nice to have at least one Hue cast in the back pocket. Or when you truly just need to delete something without any questions asked. Like, I definitely want to be raw cast in tower over Hue cast. I don't really want to melee anything there. I mean, I'm sure if I get, like, completely sphered items, maybe I'll change my mind. But I'm like, nah, I just don't really want to get into a melee war with Ilgil. Not yet. I don't think I'm there quite yet. I'm gonna get a hit here. Oh, I got lucky. I should have taken damage there. I do think it was good practice to try dodging the spinners while playing with Dark Flow. I think it trained me to kind of recognize their movement patterns. So even though there is some randomness to it, I don't usually get hit all that often, as I said before. So it was definitely a good experience to play Hunter. Hunter forced me to learn the game. Ranger's like, Ranger helped me get items, but Hunter is like where I actually finally learned how to play the game. Oh, there's my bullets. <laughs> you see that slingshot effect? And we're like, <laughs> it looks like we're just getting assistance from off screen. Uh, I should probably charge Rig on this. Ooh, it was not in a good spot on my weapon swaps. Let's go this way to dodge. Thank you for the heal. I actually needed that pretty badly. I keep getting clipped by somebody else's spinner. This is so sad. I will walk around and there's nothing you can do about it. Might as well as die, mate. Alright, I'm at a kill range of the claw swipe. So that's always nice. Rude. That was like best case scenario for me. You better not go up in the sky. Oh, you're done. Goodbye. Man, it feels so good to kill falls on this phase and not have to worry about any other attacks. That is called endgame privilege. <laughs> No more, no more laser dodging, no grants, no soul links. Mm -mm. Oh my bad, I did- oh that's right, multiplayer. If I don't get the kill, I get less XP. So it looks like we'll do two more TTFs instead of just one more. I do want this character to level. I'm sure chat is very heartbroken about being given another chance at TTF. Like, oh no, not more TTF. Need some souls to it. I think I went mostly money neutral. That's kind of nice. Thank you, high level play. Team damage. Oakley of offering to hop out. Is there anybody that wants to join in some TTF shenanigans? Nice, I earn money as a hunter. What a rare experience when using charged weapons. So let's see, we Super Bomberman 2. Apparently there's also Super Bomberman 3. Might as well load that one up. Jaya in particular, the 10k massacre. Aether wants to join in, sure thing. So password is king, lowercase. Okay, I got a backup soundtrack. Especially if we're doing RT later. As long as you're level 80, you're all good. You can bring whatever you want. 
Qcast will bring the DPS. Stomp, stomp, stomp. got a healthy amount of Berserk versus Charge. Ah, oh, the Ramar. Oops, I killed the emote. My bad. But welcome, Aether. A HP just rise false stuff is nice, but not required. Yeah. Fortunately, like, at least forces can at least bring you back up pretty fast. Oh, is that a Yashmana call? Nice. I forgot the box check. My bad. Box check. It's always funny seeing people turn around for that box check. Okay, I killed a decent number of them. So I missed like one wave, not the end of the world. When there's two rangers here, it's, it's fine, the clear speed's good enough. Oh. My bad, I thought he died already. Oh, yeah, this should be good. Poor dragon. I love that before it fell, it was already basically at minimum HP. That is so funny to me. Uh, let's see if we can get a good timing shot here. Ah, uh, I remember the days of spread needle versus dragon. Go for the timing. Almost got it. I saw a health bar move, but I didn't time it correctly. Yeah, also the little trick with dragon, I forgot to mention for people, you can prep like a heavy or a special before it becomes targetable, so that way you can uh, squeeze out a very easy clean three hit combo. That is actually worth practicing on dragon. Because otherwise, if you time it to wait until he's targetable, it's possible your third hits will completely whiff. So you'll always see me press the button before I see an indicator. And I believe in my heart <laughs> that it's gonna land. And if it doesn't land, it's fine. It just means my second and third hit were more likely to be all sacrifices. So it's good practice either way. Uh-oh, someone's slime duping over here. That Murphy. Just gonna go ahead and uh, delete them real quick. Thank you, Murphy. So we're going to freeze trap this room. I think I maneuvered there a little weird. I don't think that's going to work. Uh oh, Aether's in the room before me. That's actually bad. Uh, Come back to the center. One, two, three. There we go. This should be good. I'll be slime duping. We're good now. I just want to make sure they're in the middle, because if I'm too far to one side, I'll accidentally kill them. So I think Dango is volunteering to go behind. He'll kill the Volmer soon. Nicely done. Perfect, perfect. I'll put a tile pipe down for Dango. And I'll equip Diska to maybe get a free hit. Jelen level 20. Nah, that's fine. I think I got enough for moral stuff. I thought about it. All of us got mag invincibility. Nice. I don't have to worry about stacking it all then. It's Jaya time. One, two, swing. One, two, swing. 
power power because I don't need to waste money. <laughs> My chat is just like, <laughs> oh, like I could have, I, I could have killed it one hit sooner. And I'm like, do I really want to spend 10,000 to save a second? I don't think so. I'd rather do sustained runs without needing to go back to a bank. Oh, that's gonna be so much damage. Oh, beautiful damage. Oh, power material. Damn, I gotta go back for that. I can't leave that there, that's too good. Bonk. <laughs> Thank you for helping with the cleanup. <laughs> Sadly, they're n that group is not worth Zaloring, I'll tell you why. Those enemies are like the only enemies that will refuse to attack each other if you leave the room. If they attacked each other when we left the room, I would do that in a heartbeat. I've learned the hard way that they ignore that. It's quite annoying, actually. They're like the only enemy that actively checks where you are. I think maybe due to their like laser logic that they have to check for it. Well, I was barely on time for that Sinnoh Red. It was a little silly. I said re S Red Arm. Put down some freeze traps for the group. Oh, I like the emoticon from Aether there. The fact that I can almost normal heavy heavy them is very funny to me. Goodbye. Wait, where's B? Oh, and the other. Oh, he's still in the Sinnoh room. Oops. Rip Murphy. My bad, I could have gone back and cleared a Sinnoh. So we got some tell pipes up. I'm gonna switch the soundtrack. That was a short soundtrack. That is the downside of SNES soundtracks. Yeah, we go kind of for a weird hybrid strategy here. Yeah, that can happen sometimes. It's just kind of unfortunate. I didn't check to see where they stood when they froze. It depends on how, like, the team pulls them. Like, sometimes that's not a problem, and other times they leap as it freezes. And then it's, like, a big problem. I'm gonna keep using Twin Blades here. Easy pickup. There we go. My material, nice. I think I'm on one of those. Let's just take a safety heal. Yeah, the strat is to go slightly to the right. Freeze trap. I could double freeze trap or walk in the corner, whichever, it doesn't really matter. As long as I'm not in front of the Dark Bringer, I could kill. Need a better weapon for that. Maybe we'll Excalibur that boss thing next time. Put a little confused trap action here. They should just kill each other if I leave them alone. Pop some boxes while I wait. How did that not die? <laughs> so sad, chat. That's where that's where max level would have killed. Shed the single tier, if only I was max level. Missing sorcerer by like less than a hundred. So sad. all the Zalore. It's over. Alright, so let's put a freeze trap down. We're gonna kill the Deldies, because we want to get a Lava Cannon. Nicely done. Put down it. Oh, boy. Put down another freeze trap. Not bad. Now we run D-Band level something. 30, I'll take that. 
Okay, so we're gonna make sure we have our red handgun out, because that deals with the spinners. I think we're good to go. So yeah, Sky ID is able to check for Lava Scannon on the Deldies. Sorcerers potentially drop Psycho Wands. <laughs> Do I feel like healing? I feel like the answer is no. I will take a heal if it happens, but I'm just gonna be berserking anyway. I think I'll take the risk. What is my best way to hunt a bringer rifle? Uh I think I think a long time ago I did Endless Nightmare 4 for one of those. You can kind of pick them up casually playing TTF as well, to be honest. But that's only on certain IDs. Because there's uh three right well, you technically fight four in TTF if you do the extended hunt. So if you're doing a lot of solo TTF, you get four chances every run, which is okay. I don't like my positioning here. I'm gonna leave. Felt like they were kind of collapsing in on me. I think I have a spare bringer's arm. If you want it, I could probably just go check. It'll be on my component character. You'll have to do the monster quest or whatever to convert it. Ready to whip a whole bunch of hits here. Oh, one miss. Okay, that wasn't too bad. One miss. Normally it goes kind of abysmal. <laughs> the step before. I, I've had a triple miss before. Yeah, I'll check for Aether. It's a pretty simple item. Ooh, we're gonna go over here, I think. Oh, I did like 2000. That's not too bad. Oh wow, the vaults actually cooperated? How polite it falls to wait there and get shot in the- I was gonna say face, but more like a tip. Ooh, nice. Landed a nice solid 5 hit combo without moving. Love to see it. Oh, just a few more Foeys. It could actually die from Foey. Nicely done, team. I didn't get the kill, but we're happy either way. That has a long title music. Let's skip it forward one. Good job, team. Yeah, we'll do one more and I'll check for Aether after that. No red ring. Yeah, I used to pick up quite a few of them. I haven't done it as many, but you would normally do, I think. I think it's Endless Nightmare 4. At least that's what I used to do, because I was hunting things like Heavenly Arms at the time. So I was kind of mixing the run. So, like, the first floor of it would be, like, Del Sabers and everything else. I could put away this D band, actually, before I go any further. Or actually, I could just check the component character real quick. I guess it doesn't take that long to check. So many skip dolls. Yeah, I'll very briefly swap characters, then come back. So I don't think it'll take me that long to verify. So I'll just make a blank game for Aether to join. I always type 99 because I never remember how many banks there are. <laughs> Just easier for me to do that. Yeah, it should be in the component character. I think I had like six. I gave away at least two. I should have at least one in this character's bank. It's like a, it's an okay hunt. It's just that it's like, it's it's more worthwhile to hunt the Photon Crystals than it is the Bringer's Arm, sadly. So 
we'll call it Ziggy Trade. Let's see if I got one. Oh, I hate when I accidentally hit F11. So many magic rocks. Oh, maybe I... Oh no, I, I still got two. Ah, keep one for later. Boink. And we're gonna switch characters back to the other one, and then I'll make the game. There we go. No problem, Aether. Hopefully that helps you out. That is a useful item to have. It's not bad on rangers if you don't have any 50 hit uh, demons, but it's super good on force because it's a sniper range demon. And it also is decent ATP, so it kind of makes up for their terrible, terrible damage <laughs> when you're looking to do it versus just a common weapon. Matters a little less for a uh, ranger because you, you have enough raw ATP that's not as big of a concern. Demon rifle so cheap though. Yeah, it is. For new world mags being made, I'll let you know whenever it's done. Thank you, hopefully. Helping fix out some of the mags. Let's make another game. <laughs> Poor you more. Yeah, that that's that's a great item, especially if you're gonna be playing a lot of episode four with force. You're naturally gonna come into, especially if you're blue ID, either a lot of things on very hard. Or, if you play a lot of Episode 4 in general, you'll probably get like a Photon Crystal every other run or so. Much more so in lower difficulties. Funny enough, the lower difficulties are amazing for it. Normal mode is like every rare enemy, I think, gives Photon Crystal, which is very silly during Rare Enemy Week, by the way. Yeah, Bringer's Rifle needs to be like near max hit. I would say it, it's very easy to get it to plus 20 hit. It's a little harder to get it beyond that, but at least a little something will help. So you joining us again, Aether, on the uh, TTF? Rumo Pantery says just hit level 40 on first character, put me in coach. It's, it's pretty insane. I'll, I'll double check. I had my guide open earlier. Aether's in. But welcome, Remote Battery. Hope you're doing well. No, it's it's actually insane how many Photon Crystals they get. It's like not an exaggeration to say they get a million of them. So like... Oh, hold on, hold on. Not normal mode. I might be thinking of hard mode. One second. I think I'm thinking of hard mode. Yeah, Dorfon Eclair's got Photon Crystals. Azuzu has Photon Crystals in hard mode. You can get ad slots from Del Rappies on hard mode too, which is kind of sick. And then pretty much all the box drops I think on normal also have it. Double checking. Oh, I'm sorry. They're all ad slots in that one. Never mind. Slightly misremembered. It's still pretty silly though how many chances you get at it. Yeah, Pazuzu, Dwarf on Eclair, Rappy gives, Rappy Beak, sadly. Doing great, started Infinity Journey a couple days ago. Last time we played PSO was back in 2000s on GameCube. Nice, nice. Yeah, I might have been thinking of Marissa AA too. Marissa AA definitely gives it. I think I remember there were three enemies that gr granted it. I thought they were all on surface. I thought one of them was Satellite Lizard. But weirdly, they, they don't have it there. Oh, crashed. Yeah, I just noticed we're down a player. We'll, we'll make again. That's fun. You could wait another minute. I saw four in my defense when I was in the counter. Happens from time to time. Unfortunate. Karameter says it kind of sucks that you could fail putting hit on enemy weapons. I have been really lucky with that. I'm eventually going to get bad things to happen with it. 
Psycho one from Gibbles. That's funny. It's just writing about that the other day. Yeah, I think I think most of my weapons have been 17 or less photon crystals in order to max it. I've been very fortunate. Some people lose like literally like 40 plus trying to gear it up. In the meantime, we'll open more Bomberman soundtracks, because there are a million of them. Let's see, Super Bomberman 5 is the next one. So we'll give Aether Drift a moment or so to hop in. Hey, a remote battery. Hopefully your journey through Affinia is going well. Yeah, I don't really like RNG upgrades in general. Yeah, I think I've upgraded like Grass Assassin Arms, S Beats, Two Bringers Rifles. All of them have been under 20, I'm pretty sure. Funny enough, I think I failed the, uh, the 100% to 80%. I failed the 80% one five times in a row, which I thought was funny. Oh no, crash again. Hmm. That is most unfortunate. Do you, do you look at the logs, Aether Drift, as to why it's crashing? Because that should not happen like that, that often, for sure. I, I would definitely ask for help for that. Yeah. Like, we've had it before with, like, connection issues. Sometimes people drop due to connection. And that, that happens from time to time. But it's definitely not that common. Like, it should not be ever back-to-back -back like that. It should be a, oh, this is, like, once every four months it'll give me an issue kind of thing. So we'll clear out the quest. We'll see if RT behaves differently or not. Yeah, it doesn't give a message, but there are logs for the for the game. So like if you were to dig into the Affinia files, it will log what the error is. And I believe all, or if it's not there, it's in like literally the computer logs. Usually people ask how to do the logs in the help menu. I forget which one it's in. Because by default, Windows will record any errors. I don't remember if they were leveraging that or if they had their separate logs offhand. Yeah. I, I would ask either way. They'll, they'll tell you how to get to the logs. I've only had to do it once before. I'm like, normally I go to OBS. OBS has its own folder, but I'm like, wait a minute. I was like, PSO might be just using the standard Windows logs. I love that the hunters are like, yeah, we're going to DPS the boss down. Don't worry about it. Another photon drop. Wow. That is quite silly, for sure. So many box photon drops so far. I was gonna say, you have Excalibur, you're honorary hunter. <laughs> it's like you're, it, you're just low level hunter. We're raising you up. <laughs> Oh, nice. Maybe some dupes. Uh, I could dupe it from there, I think. I think this will work. Oh, I didn't set it up properly. I'm dumb. There are indeed hidden walls in this game. It is quite obnoxious for some of the spawns. There we go. Oh boy. I don't want to be in this room. Thank you, Murphy. <laughs> that was a do not want kind of scenario. So let's do some slime dupes. I'll let both of them handle that room together. They should be fine. Slime duping time. One, two, three. Now I can dupe. That's all it takes, chat. Three shots. 
Then it'll split like you're hitting them on the third hit of your attack. You get a million slimes. Look at that beautiful XP. So yeah, we're working on a guide. I'm sure this will be super not timely on YouTube, so apologies to YouTube. But for the people here on Twitch today, there will be a big guide coming out. If you're not already in the Discord, I recommend checking it out. We have uh, basically a work in progress for Ultimate. It is probably good to go for next week. So if we're going to do a stream next week, it will be dedicated to the guide. If for whatever reason something comes up, it'll be the week after. I don't think I need additional time on it. I think I'm good. Ooh! Goodbye. Disgusting damage. I think the companion uh, item guide will, will not- or the grid will not be like super ready. By next week, it'll it'll have like 80% of what's there, but it doesn't have everything that I covered. I'm going to go and rename that a little bit. Get rid of you. Yeah, the only downside is I started that one before I went into the guide, because I was just trying to determine what items you could hunt in Ultimate. So some of the terms are a little off. Most of the items are fine. I'm just missing items. Since I found some later on that I was like, oh yeah, that's probably good to tell new players to do that. So yeah, definitely check it out in the Discord. I put a little thread for it. So if you want to get a sneak peek before next week, we'll be there for you. Okay, let's try to time this a little better. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. We want the leg of the Sinnoh Red to spawn. That's good enough. A little delayed, but I only took one hit from that, so I'm okay with that. So basically, as long as somebody kills the other Barans, I'm fine. I can kill two Barans every time we come here. Q cast damage. Look at that, Murphy cleaning it up there. Nice. John Murphy. Oh, that was clean. Love to see it. Thanks for the heals and the buffs. Did I mess up by going Red Ray instead of Skyly on Hughcast? Uh, no. I think Red is fine. I don't know if I consider it like pure end game, but it has a lot of good stuff for beginners. Red ID has early access to Heavenly Battle if you're not planning on trading with people, which I think is a pretty strong thing to have early on. It also gets access to Red Ring, which is the only thing that matters, honestly, for things like Qcast. Sky ID is just if you want to get Seal J Sword, but honestly, they're not even the best characters at hunting Seal J Sword anyway. Damn, that was so fast. Chat, you're so efficient. Yeah, Deep Heart is also a really great pickup on Very Hard. You do that by fighting uh, Bull Claws with the one retrieval quest we run all the time for it. Definitely check out the wiki for that. I thought for sure it was going to cage me. I got so worried. I was like, please don't cage me, Vault Up. I'm going to be so sad. Here's May Fly. Nice level up. It's getting closer, chat. Its true potential has almost been realized. So yeah, I, I would say Red is pretty fine. I, I like Red ID actually for Episode 4 a lot, so as long as you don't like really dislike Episode 4, honestly Red is a really solid one, especially if you plan on making other characters. So for example, they get access to things like uh, Heavenly Ability, Century Ability, Heaven Striker, more Heavenly Battles. To some extent, things like Cannon Rouge. So if you want to make an ult character that's a ranger, you could potentially farm them with your current character. I think Qcast does okay there. They don't have some of the endgame units, so you'll probably need another ID at some point anyway, because it's not really possible to get every item on one character regardless. So I would probably keep an eye out for things like 
V101, V502. You probably want to do vice runs at some point. But honestly, if you get even just some basic equipment like red swords or whatever, should be fine. I am so sad that knocked me down because I got stuck on his crystal. I cannot believe I got stuck on his crystal. I was really unlucky, actually. Because that caused me to not be able to turn or hit him. Uh, purple is really, really strong on Ranger. I would say that's a good idea. The only downside with, uh, if you go purple is that they don't do red ring, so they could be a little awkward to level. So you'll probably have to join other people's games. But otherwise, like, purple is, like, super solid for, uh, Rangers. They get access to things like Yashminikov 9000M, uh, they get access to V502, they get access to just a lot of mech guns in general. So it's a pretty solid one to get. Pink Phonumen's pretty fun. Especially, I would say, like, if you're playing without trading, I think Pink ID is super, super solid. They get access to all the amplifiers. I don't recall if they get all the cloaks, though. Even though I just did the guide, I don't remember offhand. So you might have to... Tr mm, I'm not sure if you have to trade for things like Ignition Cloak. I would double-check the list. It'll be on very hard if they have access to it. But yeah, basically Red Barrier, they get a lot of opportunities at Red Barrier and Amplifier at Gafoe. They can basically do every run and it's relevant for them. They also have fantastic access to Excalibur, which is a thing your Hugh cast is going to want at some point. And Forces are really good at unlocking sealed items. So if you need to get 20,000 kills, for example, to unlock an item, the Phonumen can just hold it at higher levels and unlock it pretty quickly that way. So Force is always a good thing to have, even if you don't take them into, like, super high-level play. But yeah, Pink ID will also get things like Mother Garb, which is a good way of reducing TP. Adip, which is fantastic for accuracy and reducing TP. Uh, they get access to, I think, every elemental item in the game. So if you just wanted one ID that was like, I'm gonna play a Force to get Force things, it's not bad. They do have some pretty strong runs, especially if you're playing with more human characters. Things like Slicer Fanatic are really good, as an example. Where it's just kind of like the end-all, be-all item. Damn, my menu terribly there. My bad, team. I got confused where it was in the list, because I didn't see it right away. I'm gonna go this way to reduce damage. Yeah, that's kind of the downside. Oh, the spinner blocked me. That is really unfortunate. Oh, I think if I just like a little bit... I'm gonna take a safety dime right here. I might get clipped. There we go. Yeah, I, I, I did like my pink phone new men. To some extent. I love them in cookie quests. I think the downside with pink ID is that I think it's a, like a quote-unquote like really strong starter ID, but like once you have those items, they don't have a lot of what I call like repeatable farms. So that's that's more of a super super late game problem, Rip Dango. So what I mean by that is like most people will be hunting something that potentially gives like hit percentage. So you know you want a character that has access to Frozen Shooter for Rangers, Heaven Striker. Uh, with hit percentage is really good to farm. Excaliburs are really good things to be able to farm. But Pink ID doesn't get as many of those. They do technically get a Excalibur run, but they're okay at episode two. I felt hard focused. Game please. Why did all three swipes target me? <sighs> Just out of range. So sad. Ooh, and we got short cycle. That's unfortunate. Oh, you're targeting me? Well, that's rude. I'll take the hit to dodge the Grants. Oh, if I took two more steps, I would have dodged Grants. That's so sad. I am surprised I didn't kill myself there on that. No! I was smashing Moon Atomizer! I was mashing, I shot and mashed. So sad for Murphy. I tried. 
I mean, I think you need purple ID regardless. I'm still matching Boon out of my Zerdor in the cutscene. I don't think that was fast enough, though. Rip Murphy. Uh, I think purple's fine. Purple's really strong on a ranger. It's just up to you who you think will end up being really fast for TTF. It technically doesn't super matter. 28k till next level, oof. So we'll switch over to, I think, some RT runs for people that want to hop in for that. I'm going to switch characters, though. Uh, Faux Newman. Faux Newman, the way I would look at it is that I would look at any ID that's potentially really strong at episode 4 and also realize that they're they're not bad at episode 1 clears. You could use them for boss rush, for example. They're okay at it. Like, I had a Viridian Faux Newman, but I don't know if I would hard recommend him over other ones, if that makes sense. I think, for example, green and red ID are super, super strong for forces because it gives them access to episode 1 and episode 4, while meanwhile you don't really care about episode 2. Pink ID sadly has a lot of things that are in episode 2, and they're okay at it, but they do have some really solid 4 stuff throughout, so I can't discount that. Bo Newman is amazing in episode 4 in Forest, exactly. I think they do, like, for example, they do really solid caves for the most part in Solo. Their Forest clear is pretty good. I don't like them for Mines or Ruin runs, though, generally speaking. Unless you're playing, like, ATP. <laughs> 50 hit bind caliber, that's so sad. Nothing of interest in this store, we'll move on. Uh, but yeah. I mean, it's kind of one of those things, like, if you're gonna pick a character... Like, if you're gonna go to a hard area, like Tower or, like, Seabed, you probably want to make sure those IDs are on your ranger because you're probably gonna have the easiest time on the ranger there especially if you have like a raw cast or something so i know my big regret is i do like blue id i do like blue id forces but they're not like quote unquote the best they're like a great secondary id like if you're gonna make more than one force then being able to rush people through very hard is very funny so we're gonna swap characters. I don't think I need anything from this character, right? We should be good. But yeah, the way I would view it is if you take a look at our guide when it comes out, it's in the Discord right now, technically. I go through most of the items, and you could kind of take a look at some of the endgame IDs. Murphy's using the restroom. I'll cleave will hop in. Ooh, 172. We're getting close. The magic number is 180 for Red Ring. We're getting there. Yeah, I just... Also, I revamped the uh, Popper Guide, which is playing normal to very hard. So if you're trying to get an idea of what items your current ID can get, uh, I would highly recommend checking that out. Just from the standpoint, I know it's a little bit of self-promotion, but I really do feel like a lot of players don't know some of the new quests, because one, some of them are custom quests. Two, if people are coming from older versions of PSO, they don't know of the higher quality ones that have come out. So I think a lot of people just either skip episode four or don't know about it, and that ends up being kind of a big mistake. It is really, really good. Yeah, like, especially if you're leveling through, like, normal runs of, like, I don't know, standard quest in episode wrong. Oh, my bad. Wrong quest. I was thinking episode one. Yeah, we'll leave. My bad. I was talking about the episode, and that made me type that in. <laughs> that wasn't even a miss menu. My brain did not think of two episodes simultaneously. Try that again. Yeah, like, episode 4 is great when you have some items. So definitely, like, don't go there, like, with no equipment. Look over the guides. If you go in with, like, some melee, like, a guilty light, 
you will have a much better time than if you just go in with like all ranged weapons and then you're like, wait, how do I kill satellite lizards? You're like, oh wait, how do I do a Gerdabulu? So I just want to make sure players know how to counter those. And that's why the newest guide is going to have a whole section on like meta items and strategies. I think this character's good. Honestly, I don't even care about lizards. I feel like people overrate them. They are so easy. It's like an excuse to use Hunter. What a good feeling. Oh, I have to double check if that's in the guide. I think it is. If you can fuse trap the satellite lizards, they all target each other. So you can hit them with ranged weapons anyway. <laughs> like, there's so many ways you can counterplay them. It's actually crazy. Yeah, this character just needs some raw levels. I think Charge Vulcan should be good for the boss. I don't think I need anything too crazy here. She's got a 35 hit giant, more importantly, is a beast. I got Kunai for hitting the Dub Witches. Yeah, Lizards, are, I feel like Lizards and Zoos force you to swap weapons. So like, if you're, if you're used to just doing a hunt with one weapon, you're definitely gonna have a bad time. But like, honestly, I think that's like one of the best parts about PSO is needing different weapons for different situations. Oh, oh, you did episode two? I'm so sorry. Episode two, honestly, waste of time on almost every difficulty. It, it, it is so bad. I don't know why it exists. I think I wrote in the popper guide, like, quote, I don't never go here or something like that. Like, normal mode, episode two drops literally nothing of interest. Literally nothing. Like, it's just so bad. All the hunts are miserable, the drop rates are terrible. I think hard mode at least has, like, attribute wall. So you could say, like, at least in theory, it has something useful. But it's like, man, it's so bad. Oh, there you go, you found the Discord link. So yeah, I put a little thread in the PSO section. We have, like, a lot of tabs. That has a link to the updated Popper's Guide, which is more mobile-friendly. So people that were viewing it on something other than PC, or even just a tablet, it should be a lot easier to read. And I redid it so that if people are utilizing... Uh... No really useful to learn spawns, pretty much. I basically revamped it so that it uses the outline format for Google Docs. So you could quickly jump to different sections. So if all you want to do is you don't want to learn about like the, the accuracy glitch, you don't want to learn about quest items, and you want to specifically look at like what's in very hard, you should be able to do so now more easily without having to go through the whole guide. So I just want to make it more player friendly. And I think I achieved that with the latest update. I want you to know that took a while to update chat, like no joke. I did like completely reformat it start to finish. So. The new guide is built purely. I literally did it on my phone. So I'm like, I can read it completely on mobile without any issues. And it's it's mostly fine on PC. And then after that, we have planned one more guide. And then after that, I don't think I have anything. I think that'll be the end of the guides, honestly. So unless chat has like specific requests for me to show something off. I don't think I really have anything planned beyond the next guide. The next guide will be uh, tentatively, it's like PD's trading in you, where if you were to trade what items are actually worth it and what order you should get it for new characters, I basically have a guide only covering that. It doesn't go into like item details. In the video, I'll probably go over why they're selected to some extent, but I, I wanted the guide to be very simple. I didn't want it to be text heavy. Because I feel like I already cover what most of those do in the other guides, so there's no point in repeating the information twice. Yeah, that one I haven't released yet on the Discord. It's technically done. I don't really need to do much else other than add in a link to the price guide so people can take a look at that. Which gives you like a rough idea of how much things go for in Affinia. But oh yeah, Chad, I put in the work. All those heart of items across all the difficulties. Recorded them all.
Yeah, I really like Blue White. See, it's kind of the, the downside. Blue ID doesn't have like a good red ring, but it has a really good episode too. So I'm glad this character is able to participate in a boss rush. I was worried I made them useless because I don't, I really don't like Hunu Roll in episode four at all. To be honest with you, I'd rather play cast. But I think she does fine. And things like boss rush here. So even though I'm not able to like use it on falls unless somebody else makes the game, at least I can say, hey, I can host the game. There's a reason for me to use the Hunu Rule over like a force. <laughs> nice little teleport there from Barbara Ray. <laughs> I definitely wrote that in the tips section for the ultimate that Barbara Ray will just glitch teleport randomly. Just one of those, one of those quirky PSO things. Bookmarking the popper guide so detailed and organized. Nice, nice. Yeah, if you're curious about the endgame hunts, the um, the other guide that's listed in the thread will help quite a bit with that. The rags to riches. Got tagged with uh, poison. To do whatever damage I can to the boss. Nicely done, team. Okay, you ready for the lineup Olympics? Let's go. Who's gonna win the lineup Olympics today? Who will disembark this raft successfully without needing to reorient their character? Nice level up. Or if you got that 28k, I'm gonna take the mine material. Uh, so we're gonna look, we're gonna look at the raft, and line up with the other divot. Ooh, I don't, I don't like that angle. We're gonna go for the lineup Olympic again. I don't feel like I'm winning it yet. Ooh, ooh, we're, we're clustered. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be close. <laughs> so it all depends on character angle here. Ooh, Murphy with the risky buff, because that reorients him. That could mess up his chance at winning the lineup Olympics. I'm holding forward. Let's see. Will I line up correctly? Oh, I think I'm a little off. Oh, I lose. Damn. I think Dango wins. Good job, Dango. A slightly off. That was a heartbreaker. And yes, we have nothing better to do on <laughs> that raft ride. Te teach everybody how to play the lineup Olympics. You look at the far strip, and you want to you want to center yourself on the divot or slightly to the left, depending on your angle. So I was centered on the divot, and if I had been perfectly straight with my angle, that would have been fine. But I, I needed to go slightly left and angle. It saves like a second, <laughs> but we have nothing better to do, so we might as well as. If I had dark flow, I could have been draining my HP and then tried for the lineup Olympics, but that's fine. Actually, I think I can kunai through the wall, as we learned last time. So if I aim to the left here, I could just hit this thing. With the spread shot, if I time it correctly. Nope. I mean, I hit it, but I could have hit it sooner. Close. But not what I was looking for. I gotta time the third hit, so I release it when the enemy spawn. I attacked slightly too early there, if you're wondering what happened. Hello, Roberta. I can hit the switch and hit the Del Saber. Nice photon draw. But yeah, there's a lot of things you can hunt. I think, uh, in particular, if you pick up a Deep Hearts, that's probably the easiest thing to hunt once you get a few levels. Like, don't do it at level 40, but come back at, like, level 70. Or come back when you reach ultimate. It's surprisingly good. ATP is king, so anything that increases ATP or accuracy uh, pretty much are the number one items across the board. Hunter doesn't have a ton of those options until later levels. Like, it's very difficult, for example, to get a Kasami Bracer until you're an ultimate, which adds 35 ATP. Of course I didn't get invincibility. 
Yeah, power leveling. TTF is not bad. Charles is not really great for power leveling. It's great for events. There's a lot of very easy enemies to kill. Unless you mean solo, because sometimes you just can't clear TTF fast enough, which is fair. I'm gonna back up slightly so we can avoid that damage. Go for the charge Vulcan here. Shot early. That way I can land the charge Vulcan, and that was worth it. So again, we fired before... Did I have a perfect boss fight? I didn't take damage? Oh, yeah. Normally I get clipped by this boss. This boss has ridiculous AoEs. Yeah, when you when you go to play Forest Remote Battery, if you if you level a Mind Mag as you're playing right now in preparation for them, especially if you do a little bit of Episode 4, as Rappi's Beak is an easy pickup. Is that a 50 hit Riot Disca? I'm so sad. I'm so sad, Chad. Another wasted item. You will be surprised at how powerful they are. Especially Faux Newman. I'll put it this way. TTF is often barely on par, if not usually worse, than just doing episode 4 of a lower difficulty with a, with a fully geared character. It's kind of stupid how much XP episode 4 has. Like, if you're used to seeing 100 XP a kill, double it. 55 hit caliber? What, it, what is going on? Hellcleave? I'm, I feel like I'm being teased. That's not worth anything, right, Hellcleave? It's a 25 native 55 hit caliber. I'm assuming I should not pick this up, but I just want you to be aware of it, Hellcleave, so you can feel my confusion. I'm assuming it's not worth it. Yeah. Sadly. Oh, actually, I should have stayed there for the geese. Nah, I didn't roll. It only rolled at 25, sadly. Yeah, episode 4 XP is really insane. We have a, uh, we have a video on our YouTube for different quests. Honestly, like, when you come back with a little bit of cash for Beyond the Horizon for pure leveling, or if you do, um, what it's called, Massive Attack 4A, no, 4B, excuse me, uh, that quest gives insane XP. It's harder to do as, like, a melee class, so that's not usually their go-to, but everything is basically weak to Gafoe and Rafoe. so the moment you get, like, Fire Scepter Agni... Um, maybe you're lucky and get a red barrier. You're basically able to kill almost everything with just stacking Gafoe repeatedly. And you absolutely devastate the difficulty. And this is without even being max MST. Like, you could be at, like, 800 or 900 out of, like, 1400 uh, potential MST. And you will absolutely slap those enemies from existence. Like, the only thing you really need as the force is maybe some demons... We were talking earlier about Bringer's Arm slash Bringer's Rifle, which we cover in the new guide, is a excellent tool of demons. Or if you're playing Pink ID, you'll naturally come across something called Slicer Fanatic, which is one of the most unfair options of all time for Force. <laughs> Nardhawk says MA4B. Oh, yeah. So the problem with the problem with C is that it's kind of long and it doesn't it, it's not like you're almost not guaranteed to get a full clear when you're running it solo. If you run if you run B, there's a lot more zoos, which zoos tend to have really good items depending on the ID. So like an ultimate, for example, that's a lot of V101 chances, or it could be your V801, or it could be like Girasol. Really great chances. You give up some Gurdabulu, which is okay. There's better quests for Gurdabulu, but more importantly, you can clear it. So let's say, for example, you're playing very hard mode. If you're playing blue ID very hard mode, we recorded into the popper guide. There's literally a section called why we play blue ID on very hard mode. You get things like Jaya, double photon crystal chance, ignition cloak. You get heaven striker coat. Thank you for the follow, Nardhawks. Um, you get so many fantastic items in one run. Like, and they're endgame. I don't even mean, like, this will carry you to ultimate. I mean, this will carry you beyond ultimate. <laughs> like, they're so strong. I might as well as throw kunai. I got nothing better to do. I'm Azure Wrath on Affinia, by the way, but this is awesome information. Good to know. 
yeah so definitely check out the guides we talk about quests more in detail like there's especially things like the easter quests or like the events the special events are like super great times to play uh but we do have on our youtube specifically uh going through a whole bunch of quests because i think a lot of people just don't know how strong the episode 4 quests are i'll give another example i'm always gonna call it wrong i believe it's new mop up operation the third one <laughs> that's at episode four whatever number that is because who knows what the numbering system is in that game that takes you to uh underground has basically the most xp possible in the game it's really really hard to compete with that outside of that also feed your bags that's true uh, we're gonna stand back here and just do some pot shots i could charge bulk in the boss but it's already over but honestly that that quest is actually insane it gives so to give numbers for ultimate if you're used to playing on ultimate ttf usually gives between like 140 to 160 xp a second depending on your clear efficiency that episode 4 quest gives like 210. <laughs> it's it's literally like doing two ttfs if you're able to handle it and if you're able to solo it which is surprisingly really not that difficult with bo newman in particular uh your xp advantage is insane you'll level so fast you'll question why you weren't doing it before maybe run mars card because i wanted to do red ring runs and i want to do demon needle spam farming interesting interesting sky's not a bad id i mean especially if you plan on doing a uh, seal j sword hunts at least you have it on a ranger so that, that's not bad also good excalibur i think ramar does fine on surface you know, you take advantage of Heaven Striker even without Striker unit. Pretty solid. Yeah, Frozen Shooter for Tower is so good, though. <laughs> I think I literally wrote in the notes for the new guide, it was like... It was like, it was pretty much like, do, do not recommend without having at least two plus sources of freeze. I think is how I phrased it. And Frozen Shooter was in the parentheses, of course. Yeah, Heaven Striker is complete endgame tier. Its sacrifice special is genuinely one of the most powerful things ever. It scales super hard off of weapon attributes. Having hit percentage is completely insane on Ramar. You could basically combo kill everything in the game. Outside of like maybe Tower, because Tower is stupid. But honestly, there's a lot of enemies you think you would not kill, even in things like Seabed. And if you crit, you can kill them. You just kind of roll your eyes when it happens. But yeah, it's like super, super solid. But yeah, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. But uh, I cover it a lot more in detail in the guides for sure, because I'll forget stuff offhand. I think my favorite one for people that have not played uh, Episode 4 before is uh, Black Paper's Dangerous Deals 2 is like one of the dumbest ways to get items you're not supposed to have in lower difficulties to help you get to ultimate. Like it is hilariously stupid. Like if you have a force, it's like just think about it this way. You could get like the equivalency of a near end game gun just by spending a photon crystal and getting a little lucky. Like the gun I'm using called the last swan is an example of what I got from episode four. And literally, you could get it on normal. I recommend probably doing it on hard because you get more chances overall. But yeah, you could get some really stupid things. You could even get like Cannon Rouge prior to Ultimate playing that quest. I don't recommend burning like a lot of Photon Crystals, but honestly, from the standpoint of just looking for something for like a really early boost, these are the kinds of things are there. Yeah, I like very hard mode. I agree. So that's also a great thing to do, and I think people also uh, kind of underestimate it. Very Hard Episode 4 is competitive with Ultimate early areas, if not better in every single way. Because you're fighting enemies with way less health, way less resistances, and you get about the same XP. Because <laughs> Episode 4 doesn't make any sense. And I don't think it's hard either. So like, if you're even struggling in like Forest Ultimate, or even like caves ultimate like doing like surface episode four very hard is easy 
comparatively. Unless you just have literally no weapons for it, then, you know, you'll feel differently. Keeping an eye out for Heaven Punisher, because I want to get melee for fun. Mm. Yeah, it's a shame that the uh, mech gun special is not worth using when combining. I think it's Ophiel Seize plus Heaven Punisher. Just due to the fact that mech gun has a slower, or is more of a delay. So, like, it'll always be worse than just Heaven Punisher's thing, which is a bit sad. That I wrote in the new guide. <laughs> I wrote that today. <laughs> but yeah, basically all the notes are good there. Yeah, we're doing a pretty popular... Well, popular is kind of an overstatement. We're doing a common episode 2 run where basically we're just doing the boss rush. So I do the box check here. It's not super necessary, but it, it is seabed. In theory, I could get useful commons, but reality, sadness. My only goal for this is to be at 100 PB before we clear this room. And if I'm not there, I have another way of building it for the boss. This is probably one of two bosses, or at least quests, where it is actually meta to get the mag blast. So I'm at 100 meter, so I don't need to worry about building meter at all. People like the Force, or like people that are health spammers, will probably donate the 30. Oh, I shot slightly too slow there. I should have gone with my gut instinct and shot earlier. Oh, this enemy is so annoying. There we go. Well, anyway, people will walk into that Saul over and over to build meter. I fortunately don't need it. So I'm assuming because Dango did not use health, he's probably pretty close. Yeah, I just heard the mag blast. So if you have not seen this boss get deleted, mm, oh Hellcleave's pretty close. We'll wait for Hellcleave. Uh, the we were just talking about Heaven Striker earlier. So this is another boss that I think I didn't know about until recently. I did not realize the auto target of Heaven Striker had such an absurd vertical angle. So for people that have Heaven Striker versus Olga Flow, you can actually start the battle by walking against the arena and triple special shotting, and it will hit the boss while it's up there very silly so we could get some ultra cheesy kills so highly recommend if you have heaven striker it hits way way higher up than you would think Zulora also hits off screen for people that don't see it as long as it's at least level 20 you will hit the boss we've seen 15 will whiff so somewhere between 15 and 20 is the actual number but 20 is the safe number Sadly, I do not have it in order to hit this boss. I'm gonna make sure I have Charge Vulcan equip, be more efficient here. I need the accuracy from the gun more than I need the multi-hits, because last one already multi-hits. So yeah, we're gonna see potentially Hellcleave literally special, special, special into whatever gun. He actually has enough time to swap weapons after special, special, specialing, and he could still get his full combo out. It's kind of disgusting, it really is just free ranger damage. So we'll see if he goes for it. Unfortunately, some misses. So close. We're like one hit from killing this phase. That was so close. Oh, man, if those specials hit, that would have skipped the phase. That's so sad. Yeah, it, it was still a good phase overall, but oh, the specials whiffed. It can happen. It, unfortunately, it is not guaranteed you land the specials, but it is always worth going for because it is hilariously stupid. He dodged, yeah. So, as a reminder for people that are playing along, do not hit the, the boss. Not for anybody here specifically, but for people watching. Uh, we're looking for the boss to look left to right. If you do not do this, the boss will punish you. Using a zero hit so it happens, yeah, that makes sense. So we're gonna wait, we're gonna wait, we're gonna wait, and then now we can hit it. If we do that, it makes the boss stand around longer, and then the boss dies. <laughs> GG. So if you have not seen that before, uh, yeah, we, we disrespect the boss hardcore. Goodbye. Yeah, so otherwise it'll punish with, uh, literally sword stab divine punishment. That will kill most people. It will kill most players. It does a, it does a lot <laughs> Dead of damage. Already? Dead already, indeed, exactly. See, I'm on the ground like, oh, did we do that? That's what that pose is. Dango looking proud. 
Murphy disgusted at the chat. Doesn't want to look at what we did. Hellcleave flexing. Typical Hellcleave. <laughs> oh. Sadly, no parasitic gene flow. We got some more attempts. But yeah, if, you, if you're if you playing especially Ramar on this, oh, the Heaven Striker. Oh. We're getting some air conditioning as we wait for the boss fight to end. <laughs> the only time Gavarda is used, true story. Poor Gavarda. Episode 2 has some really unfortunate things that makes it a little kind of awkward to run. Like, those really long gaps, like, why? Do you know what I mean, Chad? Like, they could have just had a teleporter to exit, like TTF does. Wow, double S rank! Yeah, yeah, whatever. Slowly but surely, we'll climb levels with this character. Arnox says, if you pull me in, if you got an open slot, I bring Heaven Strike on Ramara's level 103, 104. Where else are you going to get Varda? That's true. I mean, you got 30 seconds, so you might as well just chill out. Uh, sure. Yeah, we can join up. Uh, I keep saying hard knocks, and I realize that's what that's the play on, but it's not hawks. Sure, you're more than welcome to join. I think Remote Battery, if you get a little higher level, we can push you the rest of the way. So if you happen to be... Like, today is not a good week for it, just because it's not XP week. But we'll we'll check in. If you, if you continue to come back... We can help you the last little push. I don't feel like doing very hard mode at the moment, unfortunately. It is fun. Oh, you're vibing right now? Okay, no problems. Is when it's XP week? Ooh, we're ready. I'll go ahead and make another game. It is indeed rare mob week this week. So it's worth grinding out the ultimate. Other ones I don't care as much. <laughs> like on rare enemy, I'll sometimes also just do it on very hard. Yeah. The thing with episode 4, varied weapons. So just be aware there are certain enemies you need to melee, certain ones you need to range attack, regardless of your character. Or if you're playing force, gafoe, 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 gafoe. <laughs> It's like, oh no, there's like two enemies that aren't Kafoeable. Yeah, it's a red drop week. We're sitting at 126%, I think. Oh, that's not what I'm looking for. I think this is the one I'm looking for. Yeah, 126%. Oh, I forgot to mention in my guide about chat shortcuts. Whoops, I should mention that. So yeah, we, we use all these little shortcuts rather than type it out. It saves a lot of time. I mean, emotes are not super necessary, but, be, but, but having like bank and lobby as like a button input is kind of nice. Quality of life. Yeah, for those that are curious, I am playing on controller. You probably hear the clacks. Unfortunately, it probably gets through the filter. Yeah, I only played this game with console controller, and I will forever play it with just console controller. Oh, don't touch the new screens for new players is on there. Don't worry. That was the first thing that I wrote. That inspired the other section. <laughs> I was like, don't do it. I wrote I wrote an explanation of why you shouldn't do that versus wall off. It's in there. So yeah, definitely want to hear some opinions definitely from people that are more seasoned or people that are more used to like the challenge mode weapons the guide is basically complete the only thing i have to update as of today is s ranks and even then that's kind of an extra because technically they're not huntable i'm mostly just going to copy my other list what has it i go this way chat just for clarity not because i'm looking for enemies i just want to make sure these boxes get popped We've seen yellow ID get uh, useful barriers there. I don't think blue gets anything too crazy, but it could be PDs. I'm not going to say no to PDs. <laughs> oh, excuse me, chat. Just DM you all the uses of them later. Sure. Yeah, I have a, I have a whole little section prepared already. Is 
Because I think Hellcleave looked over the list that I was planning to basically put in anyway. I just need to put in explanations or some like use cases. So I think Hellcleave and I are mostly on the same page when it comes to that. I still think like the demon mech gun plus lore gun plus like hell either needle slash slicer probably top three picks I'm not sure in that order specifically but the lore gun is so so strong on something like Ramar. yeah or and cast of course I do love that I'm finally able to clear falls at a reasonable pace on my Rocket Seal, but it required like a 40% uh, Heaven Striker dark percentage. Because her damage is so bad. She's fun to use, but man, you could you could feel the lack of love on some of the characters. Like man, if she just had even like 50 more ATP, how much better her life would be. Yeah, the nice thing about the blue ID run here, for those that aren't aware, is that it gets a lot of really solid drops throughout. Um, mostly in the beginning area, there's not too much I'm crazy for, but Spaceship potentially drops some interesting items. When we're doing the Gi Paradise thing, that's a lot of chances of Jaya from the enemies that are there. There's also that little side room that Hellcleave goes into, we call it the Hellcleave check, where the Sinnohs are there. Those are two chances for V501s, which are solid, just kind of support units. And then obviously Parasitic Gene Flow and potentially Yun Chang in Seabed in particular are really strong. But it really does just have like solid items throughout. It also drops things like that Gal Griffin Wing, which is a bit more situational for forces, but it is very good. I haven't used it on stream, sadly. Speaking of Jaya chances, Jaya is basically throughout. Blue ID is like, what if what if your identity was Jaya? And all you want to do is Jaya as a hunter. So it's rare that you have like a completely dead area due to how many Jaya chances there are. <laughs> Why not Jaya exactly? Nicely done. But yeah, episode four, Forces. Oh, everybody should try that once. Make a phone Newman. Enjoy life. Laugh at the game. If you if you start a phone Newman with all mine materials, or if you want to do his max stat, which is like 140 mine, 10 luck, uh, both of them are fine enough for climbing. Give him a mine mag. Laugh at game. There's nothing they could do. Yeah, my monster reader says one of the shells is at like 3 million HP, which is clearly not correct. I think it's mistaking like coordinates or something like that as HP values. That's why it can sometimes glitch out. It's definitely not looking at the right part. <laughs> Jaya time. Uh oh, Murphy died. Can pop some more of the plates. As long as we don't go beyond this phase, it should be good. Okay, Giotum. Goodbye. Rip boss. Yeah, the, the drops here are usually okay. It's usually like D-roll A shells is probably the most common one from Barbara Across the different IDs. They're not really all that worthwhile, to be honest. Okay, lineup Olympics. Thank you, Shatter x 2 k for the follow. Ooh, can I... Ooh. I'm messing up the lineup Olympics. Let's try this again. Ooh, maybe? Maybe. I feel like I'm not aimed to the right here. Let's see if let's see if I win the lineup Olympics. I like Dango's position a little more, to be honest. Oh, I'm surprised Dango moved. I think Dango was actually perfect. Rip. I think Dango might be too far over now. 
Let's see, did I angle it correctly? Let's find out. Will I win the Olympics? Oh, yeah, look at that. Got it. <laughs> Stupid time savers. Okay, kill the guild chick, shoot that. Yeah, we were having discussions before whether or not it was worth using hell in this quest if you're gonna mag blast. I think the idea is that you should only have like maybe one person using hell. Forces don't count though. So I think two ATP is optimal. Cause otherwise if you're waiting for like two people to build it up, you just literally are sitting and wasting like two minutes. Like yes, you will get there at like 1850 or whatever, but you're still gonna move forward at 20 minutes. So it's like kinda not worth. I think there's some areas where it is worth it. Like spaceship is just boring. There's no reason to not use hell here. Let's see if I time this better. There we go. That time I got it. See how I would the other enemies didn't die or do anything else? If you time your kunai correctly, you can one-shot those. Little fun fact for you. So hunters have abilities to deal with the switches too. I love kunai. Kunai is unironically one of my favorite items. It has so much utility. And it is so strong against things like Gerdabulu in particular. It's even really good against Dwarfon. So the fact that you can get it as like a drop in episode 4 is like amazing to me. I'm like, oh, you get an item that actually helps you deal with all the problem enemies because it just is like pretty much one of the best options. Due to the fact that those three kunai, when you throw them, can multi-hit a single target or hit multiple targets, both of which come up often as you fight like multiple Dorfons or Gerdabulu as multiple parts. So that just instantly shuts them down. So even without like a V5 unit, having potentially five chances of it is kind of disgusting. You're probably going to land it. Like more often than not, you will paralyze even without the V5 unit. It's kind of disgusting. Speaking of disgusting, where's my mag invincibility? Chat, where's it at? <laughs> can we can we can we put up what wanted posters or missing posters? I would like to be invincible so I can walk through this attack. Because walking through that would be a big mistake without invincibility. I will die very quickly. But unfortunately, no invincibility. I'm gonna back up slightly to dodge that. Uh, let's use Charge Vulcan here. Ooh, didn't get a lot of clean hits there. I will kunai a little. That's up to you, team. I think I actually just killed it with kunai. Kunai the savior? <laughs> kunai save in the run? It did 180 times two. It had 300 health. I think that killed. Thank you, kunai. I mean, I'd probably prefer to use Dark Flow over kunai for hitting the boss when it's up that far, but... No, it's fine. Is that armor? Yeah, it is. I always forget these boxes. I should learn which ones are the weapons. I should learn. But when I take breaks, I forget. <laughs> Such a dumb item. Yeah, sadly, even though you can paralyze these somewhat easily, it's just better to hell most of these. But we're building meters, so I'm gonna keep attacking. My goal is to be at around 60 meter by the time I'm done between these two rooms. I could purposely take damage from Sinnoh Barrels and single player to build it up. But you'd be surprised how much meter you're leaving on the table for like not that different of a clear to be honest. Like if you're doing normal, like if you're doing like normal, normal special, there's not really that much difference at all, especially with Last Swan. If you're doing normal special special, you will notice the speed difference. It'll be slower. Potentially. RNG does like to troll. Yeah, so I'm already at 50 meter. So that's like three less buzzsaws I gotta deal with. Although I pushed that one out of range. That was a mistake. There we go. Yeah, gold ticket to 60, and then I should be basically on time. Rangers build meter way faster than hunters. 
specifically because there's so many bosses. Because it is dependent on how much damage you do. So Hunters technically have an edge if it's a lot of these enemies. Nice hell. We're going to go in the middle here for the Marillas. I remember where they spawn. We're already at 60. So I've hit my magic number already. So like if I wanted to, to speed up the run, because I hit my number, I could switch to hell. Like as an example, to like optimize the run. So that way I don't lose any time, but I speed up the rest of the run. As long as I'm not killing like whatever Dango's fighting, Dango will also get good uh, hits there. Sadly, giant drop with no hit percentage. We're not going to pick that up. So yeah, I'm already, I'm already well above where I need to be. Perfect. It's a 64 meter. I am I am A-OK -okay for the run. So Hellcleave's gonna go in the little passageway down there. I'm gonna ignore that. I'm just gonna keep building meter, I think. I could just barely combo kill this. This is where having like max ATP does make a difference. Or like armors that get or shields that give ATP, I mean. Yeah, I'm gonna be at like a hilarious 70%. So you're gonna see like by the time I'm done with Gal Griffin, I should be at like 80 plus, even with Charge Vulcan. Especially if I if I get hit at all, I definitely don't need to worry about ATP in the final area. But all this is just bonus. Just save some time later. So again, not super slow. Like I'm still killing in a combo. I'm removing the RNG for the most part, although sadly, sometimes I still whiff. That's mostly just lacking red ring more than anything else. So now if I build, let's say, 5% on the boss, I just have to kill about 20 creatures between now and the end. Every creature I kill here essentially is one less I have to kill later. And obviously if I get hit, then it speeds it up significantly. I might as well as disrespect Kunai. So for those that didn't see earlier, if you just turn and face to the right, if you have Cannon Rouge, you can delete this boss, the Bazooka item. Um, otherwise, you can still lure the boss as it goes by. Technically, you could also Barda it, and the boss will not hit you, most importantly. So that's why we don't move from the start here. I could just throw some Kunai here. <laughs> I think I hit it twice. It's better than nothing, but obviously, ideally, I'd probably use something like Rambling May for the Infinite Height, or more ideally, Dark Flow. Got a couple shots on him. That was really risky of me to do. Unfortunately, I got caught between two, two tornadoes, which can happen. But on the plus side, it means I don't really need to worry that much about damage. Tornado, please. Why is this still hunting me? So because I got hit by that, in a way, I lost two or three seconds for the team, but if I had Hell, I could have just used Hell for the rest of the area. 92 meter is very easy to make up in the next area. Like, it's like three buzzsaw hits, or I could just kill, as I said before, about eight characters. So now I can just afford to do box checks for the team. Armors, weapons, that's good. So I'm going to do a lot of the things that don't... Oh. I'm going to do a lot of the things that don't require me to get a kill. So I'm going to do all the optional areas. I'm going to hit the switches. We're going to let our hell team get in there. Rico boxes are a great way of building meter. So we can get optional kills on those if we need them. So yeah, I'm definitely way over PP. Normally I'd be at about 85. Maybe 82. Depending on how many uh, either last swan hits if I'm looking to build meter or... I'll use Charge Vulcan for more damage. We're gonna go and hit the Sinnoh that falls down here. Oh, I got him with that Rivarda. Outplayed. <laughs> Here's my favorite trick. You ready, chat? You look away from him. You could you could delay his laser. Although my other favorite trick. Oh, team already beat me to it. You could get by him if you angle it correctly. Sadly, we'll have another attempt at that later. I believe I put that in the tip section, that you can avoid more post laser by just not looking at the enemy. Everything is formulaic? Oh, for sure. 
So one thing that we'd like to do in this room is if there's a force, if they refoey the floating robots, it'll actually pop those boxes up there like almost every single time. And that saves some time. Otherwise, like I'll just refoey. So I'll go up the ramp in preparation for it. And again, I'm letting the team get the kills here because I definitely do not need PB anymore. I can assist the team with some heals, but I basically don't want to do anything. So there's enemies here. I'm not going to bother. I'll kill these guys, though, because they're in the way. Let's see, can I get the random freeze? You know you want to fall. There he is. <laughs> He's taking a sweet time that time. So let team kill those if they want. So again, my job is to basically just rush ahead whenever I'm able to. Hmm. Hopefully I did not enter the room there. So we're going to go ahead and put a little Gafoe down. Oh, it charged a health leave. I was wondering what happened there. So if you stand to the side and Gafoe, uh, you can stop the Delbeater from charging, but if you're at too much of an angle, it will still hit you, sadly. Or if you do it too early, that um, it also won't stop. Also, I shouldn't fight these things. We'll let team kill those. Let's go ahead and switch soundtracks. This music feels somewhat more appropriate for Seabed. How ominous. So one thing that's kind of neat about this is if you line up the pillar with like, if you stand here and shoot, you know the robot will be coming around this time. So if you have Rebarda, you could almost always hit the target. Like, see how clean that was? Those, those are little tricks for if you know the spawn timers. Without even seeing the enemy, you just go, you just call your shot. No guesswork involved. I know he's going to be there because I've done the run so many times. I'm going to believe in team and killing that last Rico box though. There we go. Uh, I could spawn the Morphos early. I don't think I want to do that. By the way, if you don't have Hell, always aim for the one that's in the upper right, because that one actually doesn't spawn anything when you first come in the room. So it's the easiest one to kill. We'll let team kill the Morphos. Those potentially drop Yun Chang, which is a good item. We want to make sure because we're going ahead of the team, we don't trigger the laser gate. If you're the last person in, you could walk through the laser gate. It doesn't matter. Like this one, I'm going to wait, so don't trigger it for the team. And again, since I'm first in, my clears don't matter. I'm just going to go through here. So we're coming in at like 19 minutes. That's a pretty solid time. Uh, nothing of interest there. So we'll clean up. But basically, it gives the ATP party members more of a chance to kill. In fact, I heard somebody get mag blast, so good decision to let them hit, get some hits. A little pause trick here. Oh, the other side was not killed by the team. Let me kill this. Got it. Ooh, I hate that buzzsaw. That turn is so much tighter than that should be. And unfortunately, because I was not the first in the room, I got body by that Zeno. I'm gonna ignore it though. <laughs> Murphy building meter with his face. Classic force way of gaining meter. Oh, I got caught on the corner again. So the problem with it is that like, the corner is not as clean as you think it would be, so if you bump into it, you also don't really slide along the wall. You just come to like a dead stop. So here's an example. We're going to see what the difference is. So I built meter. 88. 88's not bad. Yeah, we lose a lot of time waiting for mag blast. So that's why I was saying before, if you had more people using hell, like let's say it was three people using hell, we would be waiting to like the 21 minute mark plus like way above because potentially they'll be at like 30 meter and one person having it and then three people not having it is not good enough yeah all right so let's say using twins
So I, th I think we have to we have to hell responsibly. So for other people, they'll understand their own breakpoints a little bit. Like Ranger has very different breakpoints than the Hunter of how much meter you need in each area. I know I will just get like nothing from the boss, but for people that are bazooking the boss, they get like huge advantages on the other areas, so they can afford to hell a little more than a Hunter could, for example. So again, that's just kind of coming down to discretion. So like, I might only build like 4 meter. It level matters too, yeah. The higher level you are, the harder it is. But even from that standpoint, it's like, if you could bazooka a boss, you're on average going to be like 10 plus over the next party member, because you're just doing so much roll damage. And that also means you could get away with helling more creatures. There we go, I saw it that time. And it made a difference. Yeah, you'd love to see that Heaven Striker hit. That did like 1700. There we go. Cheesy Heaven Striker shots. There's no reason to not go for them. You can still get your combo. That, that'll be my tech tip for everybody there. I'm gonna make sure that's in my tip section. I honestly don't remember if it is or not. It's very dumb though. I think Rambling May can also do that, by the way. I think. Yeah, it has to be able to do it. Rambling May is, uh, it has infinite height by default, so it should ignore that. And boss be gone. Goodbye. That was a clean boss fight. Goodbye. <laughs> the power of Vulcans. Oh, yeah, that's true. Dark Flow would be able to hit it infinitely vertically. That's a good point. You know what? I don't think I labeled Dark Flow as anti-air. Anti I need to go back and double check that. I was adding tags to designate things that let you hit really high on bosses. I don't remember if I added it for that. I added for Cannon Rouge, Rambling May. A couple other minor items, but yeah, Dark Flow for sure should be added to that list. I mean, I guess I could check my god. I got I got 30 seconds. I might as well as look. Did I add it in there? Survey says. Why is it not searching it? No, I did not. I'm gonna put anti-air there. Sorry about that. For some reason, I did the control F, but it didn't do it in the document. So I just got like nothing the first time. Well, anyway, such is life. For 100 years, 8 hours. Yeah, sometimes it is funny seeing the timer glitch. So instead of saying like you took 22 minutes, it'll say you took 43,000 hours. <laughs> You're like, what? No, I didn't. <laughs> Physically impossible? No. Like, I'm pretty sure no. Exactly. It was Terrace Pharma. Oh no, am I maxed on my material? Are you waiting? Huh? Oh no. Okay, Metal Gear Solid. I understand that reference. I don't get many references, but that is one that I recognize. Let's see... Honestly, do I even need the dye fluid? I don't think I do. Let's just get rid of it. Oh, I have monomates? Ew. Got my inventory. They're not worth the healing. We're like a trimate star atomizer only situation. We, we gotta save those slots. So this character is very close to leveling, so we'll do at least one more. So is anybody else looking to hop in out of curiosity? So we bobbed to some bomber man. So let's see, we have we're playing the fourth game soundtrack. I got the fifth game loaded up. Then there's one that I think is correct. Then there's Super Bomberman R. R online. Uh, 
Alright, so now I officially have all the Super Bomberman out of the way. Sword inventory, three escape dolls. We should be good there. I have to think if I can- if I even have Seek My Master unlocked and not completed by accident. I might actually have to do that off stream. So for the Ajito 1975 I received earlier, you need to go to a very specific quest. But the problem is... I don't remember if that was I might have skipped it, maybe? Because you also need to do, I believe, five quests to get to, like, Dr. Atso's research or to convert the enemy parts, and I was trying to think... I don't think Seek My Master is required in that chain. So maybe this character specifically could do it. We'll probably give that a shot at some point. Yeah, sadly I do not have a Gurren with hit percentage to help Dengo. I think I gave him a... Sh I think I gave him a junk item, maybe. I gave somebody a junk item recently. It might have been, uh, Oreo. Jizai is a very strong combo with the Gurren Shuren combo. I do love this spawn. They go boop boop and then BAM! Visual humor. Goodbye, Hildel. That swan is just so useful. Just combo kill everything with Shifta. So disgusting. Look at that, I'm not even heavy attacking. Optimal. Managed to get to a G to 1975 before. Hit percentage is really hard to get. Are you- wait, are you looking for a Shuren in general or a Shuren with hit percentage? I was confused. Because normally people go for Gurren, because Gurren will- you could do Gurren runs and uh, Daylight Scar at the same time. Where like, Shuren doesn't really have really great rares around it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Is it- because at least then you could just be farming like Daylight Scar and that, potentially. I heard the rare sound effect, but then nothing... Oh, Devil Technique. I was like, I was like, what draw? There is a rare that doesn't register on the item reader. That is very interesting. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that, Chad. Normally the item reader picks up rares. It actually did not detect a, uh, Devil Technique. Leveling Rock House and Ship is too spicy. PV create, interesting. Like, I heard it, and then I was like, where is it? I mean, I guess if I want to get, like, the boosted version of Technique, which has no purpose at higher level, other than just to show off. I mean, I guess it's useful. So if instead of level 27 techniques, I had level 26 techniques, it would technically make my grants do more damage on some characters. Maybe be good. Because I think I have exactly one of those. Normally techniques, like, Devil Technique grants two to all technique levels, but not higher than your cap. Which, honestly, to be honest with you, it should have allowed to go over the cap, to be 100% frank with you. Uh, but... The upgraded version allows up to four levels. The sad part about ultimate at high level is that it's pretty easy to get like level 27 to level 29 techniques, except on Grants and Migid. So those are the only ones that would ever really be impacted by that, sadly. Okay, guessing game. Will it will it glitch teleport and go to the right, or will it remain in front? This is the game you can play if you're viewing at home. Will it glitch? Oh, oh, if you guessed Glitch, you would have won. <laughs> like, it's definitely not supposed to do that, but it does. I don't know if it's like 50-50. I don't, I don't know what the rate that it occurs. But you might as well just play the guessing game every time you're here. Is 
So we're gonna go in the corner here so we can aim at the paralysis creatures easier. So if you have a bazooka, for example, you just fire straight ahead and hit the paralysis, right? So I know if it tries to hit me, I'm as, basically as far away as I could go. And then I just switch sides and I can shoot the other one from the team. So even without like an AoE weapon, I was able to very cleanly shoot it. Then we guess on the timing, because this is also really glitchy. Oh, I guessed correctly. Oh, it did glitch that time. Sometimes it'll glitch up out of the surface for like a little bit. I managed to do some damage to its real HP bar. Goodbye. So yeah, getting both characters close to the 180, kind of nice and rare item week. The other thing to really hunt for, like an ultimate, would probably, as I said before, be something like Heaven Striker, because it's just so good. Ooh, I don't like my lineup. Try this again. I think that might be okay. This might be okay. I might be a little to the left. I like Dango's position more. Murphy, I think, is too far over. There's no way. I don't believe. <laughs> yeah, I might be slightly too far over. We'll find out in a second. Uh, I think with my angle, it corrected itself, so I have won the lineup Olympic. <laughs> Saving those frames, chat. That was awkward. I went to kill the guild chick, but then the switch was targetable, so I shot the switch. Oops. Nice photon draw. I'm trying to think if there's anything I want to do in episode 4. For the, the week shifts, because I probably won't stream again, PSL, for the week. We are just doing a bonus stream. Bonk. There we go. Thank you, Kunai. I was looking at Kunai, and I don't see in the wiki anything that says I should be able to do that, but it clearly works like that. I don't know what it is. It's not listed as one of the items with infinite vertical properties. But clearly it's doing some funky things, and is able to hit when it shouldn't. And I'll take that. I'm like, listen. Regenerate gear? Oh no. So this character will finally level up. Also, I might as well just fix Synchro, since I'm here. Maybe then my mag will love me more. I should be basically at a 50-50 without Synchro. But I've been failing a little too many 50-50s, I think. Hopefully the Synchro boost will help a little bit. Invincibility again. Chat, this is tragic. <laughs> Oof, three bosses in a row. I'm missing a weighted coin flip in my favor. It's painful. It's like Pazuzu all over again. Uh, so we're gonna back up to avoid that. I could technically take the damage on purpose if I wanted to. Have a good shot here. That time I landed it clean. I might have missed like the last hit of my Vulcan combo last time because I didn't prep it early enough. But that time I got all nine hits. GG. So I think next boss should level me. So chat clearing the boxes there, and I think if they clear that box. Armor. Yeah. Well, no items of interest, sadly. 
So again, my goal is to get to about 60 meter. Higher is preferred. Because that means I could skip more without needing to fight Rico boxes later. So we're gonna try not to fight anything we see Dango fighting. Make sure he gets his ATP. Yeah, one other big thing that I want to make sure is in the guide, and we're going to go over that, is definitely prioritization with targets. Because I feel like, especially if you're coming in and you're like, oh, okay, I don't want to play multiplayer until I'm like, quote unquote, ready, right? So if you do that, in some ways, it's good to learn the game on your own. But at the same time, you're missing a lot of like team dynamics. So like, for example, if you play a lot of Hunter, a lot of people won't be able to say off the top of their head, what are things forces can't kill? And I think that's one big thing that I have in the guide coming up. Because people will be like, oh, they do about even spell damage to most things, except for mini-bosses, and that is not true. There are certain things they kill very fast, and there are other things that are unkillable to them. They might as well as be immortal. But while generally rule of thumb mini-bosses is true, there's a lot of common enemies, like uh, Babudas or Talos, that completely ruin a force's day, and they cannot kill those without messing up their combo. So being able to identify that as like a non-force player is something that I'm looking to help with the guide as well. And also prioritiz like prioritization. Like for example, a force doesn't necessarily want to fight an Astark, but like hunters should not be fighting satellite lizards kinds of things. They should not be fighting basic Buddhas. Like there's some things they kill so fast that there, there's no reason to even bother targeting it. You might as well look for something else. So like in a room of like Goron, Detonator, Zoo, Gerdabulu, like what are the things you should be targeting in what order? Like those are the things I want to hope to answer with the guide a little more. And hopefully by either just skimming over it, nice level up, by skimming over it a little bit, they understand like what the force is good at, or at least in the own section, like if you're looking up the Hunter and Ranger tips, it at least outright tells you these are the things that they need help with, period. They are just miserable to fight. Because there's a lot of enemies in uh, multiplayer that are basically unkillable to force due to how resistance changes work. So they, they basically need to be babysit if they're not ATPing. And there's a lot of stuff that they can help with too. So like I'm trying to denote like where runs start to transition over from spell damage to Things like me get slash hell to things like demons only. Oh, I got a box photon drop. Well, I'm gonna go eat like the five traps that are over here. Get off me, stupid traps. Nice, I'm already at 73 meter. That's a good start. Still have an opportunity to gain more, which is nice. see it we'll definitely leave that document open for about a week we'll see what feedback we get with it i mostly just want to clean up just the challenge weapons at the moment but there are some other ones like the final stuff i have to probably reread one more time just because i think my brain went to mush listing out every single heart of item which there are a lot by the way <laughs> some of them are actually surprisingly not that rare i was surprised there were like ones that were like one in 200 of common enemies on like very hard I was like, oh, that's actually like a reasonable hunt. Then they have, then there's ones in there that are like one in five thousand on ultimate, and I'm like, yeah, never mind. Well, I got a couple hits there, better than nothing. Alright, let's make sure to not get bullied by tornado this time. <laughs> I'm I'm feeling a little targeted by Galgriffin chat. I don't know if you could tell. Okay, that one that one dodged me. Feel like it's targeting me again. Yep, okay. Two out of three. That seemed fair. So like when it's up in the sky like this, Cannon Rouge can hit it while it's up there, which is kinda nice. Oh, it interrupted my combo. On the plus side though, give me a meter. So I'm above where I need to be. I usually want to go for about 80 when I leave this area, so 82 is fine. It just means I might have to fight a couple more Rico boxes. Nice level up. Yeah, boxes.
you yeah, was thinking earlier to what Nardhawks mentioned earlier. For a long time, my Affinia ID on the forums did not match my stream ID. Since I, I started doing this before streaming. So we play many things on the stream, but uh, this is just kind of a nice way to involve people. But I do want to make sure we get more uh, potential multiplayer games in the future. I'm not like super big on things like first-person shooters and such, but at least from the standpoint of more co-op games, it'd be fun to do those in the future. I'm not sure I'll play like party games specifically, but it's nice to be able to interact with the chat a bit. Uh, let's see if I could go for it this time. So if I do this, never mind, not needed. <laughs> so anyway, I looked away from the Morpho so it didn't shoot me. I'm always scared to make, like, the resolution higher, because you technically see further. I'm like, I don't feel like finding out how awful that is on widescreen. Seeing the Morphos just due to my field of view being so massive. Hundred sixty-eight XP a second is actually pretty solid to be honest. Like right now, this is actually pretty good XP. Like most quests that I think are worth running are probably be a, about one hundred twenty XP a second to maybe a hundred, if it's like a more annoying hunt, but it's got like good density of those things. So surprisingly good XP, thanks to our clear capabilities. Oh, I don't need to build meter. No mind, I'm on hundred. Those are the things I'll fight if I need meter, for example. Rip Murphy. They got revenge. I'm gonna wait for the team slightly. Oh! Interesting. I must have touched the doorway and not realized it. That's fine. I was about to say. 760 Vice with 50 hit? Wow. Oh, from all given whoa that is not the run I thought they would be doing at all that's interesting so if they identify that they could check it up to 60 so that's even better than my vice <laughs> damn that's good I wonder what they were hunting I mean were they actually doing it like for vice yeah that was a insane amount also I should probably rip it here Oh, I didn't get the freeze. I tried. That time I just got denied due to Rebarda RNG. That's not my fault. I did not miss the tech. It just refused to freeze. And this is also why Rangers of a Shooter are your friend. <laughs> when Rebarda fails you, just be like, and hey, we don't have casts. We're just like, we'll do whatever we can. Yeah, my buffs don't really matter, so don't worry about them. I mean, you can buff me if you want, but... I'm basically just gonna, like, dip out on this first box and leave. So yeah, from this point forward, if I had a spare V502, I would probably just wear it for the rest of the run. And that's where I could save time, for example, for the team, while still doing a mix of ATP and Hell. So scared about tripping that. That wastes a lot of time if I trip that, because I got to clear him for the party, because they're the people that are actually going to deal with the Sinnohs. Tight, but not as tight as the other corridor. We are in the sound effects portion of the soundtrack, I hear. I'm getting used to Rafoe range a little bit with this character. After playing a four series to just it being the world. Like what will Rafoe hit? The answer is yes. Uh, so I cleared those. I'm gonna let Chat clear the other two. I'm gonna let Chat kill the one that's closest here. Ooh, I'm surprised I did not get hit by that. I should have been. See, that time I shot it before it could jump. That's an example of what you want to do. Nice try, though. We'll give him an A for effort. I'll walk into that because I don't feel like dodging. 
<laughs> that's, that's just the easiest answer to that. I just don't care. So anyway, let's move on to another soundtrack. So that was Super Bomberman 3. Or excuse me, that was 4. We'll go to 5. So we got here below 20 minutes. We'll just see how long it takes to build the Mag Blast. 15 Rafoe, maybe not 20 Rafoe, probably, yeah. <laughs> 30 Rafoe of like, can you see them? Yes, it'll hit. <laughs> Sadly, got a 50 hit club total. Not worth picking up. So yeah, we have uh, basically Murphy as B healing Dango as Dango builds meter. Nice, nice. Oh, speaking of which, I should have switched to Vul Vulcans there. Using twins. Not bad. This should be a very clean Heaven Striker kill. Then we'll switch what quests we're doing. So two of the characters, let's look into level. Got a little extra love. So she's almost at max ATP, I think. I think she's within two levels. Oh, she hit max ATP actually on that level. Never mind. I thought she was at 1230, now 1237. So there we go. She officially cannot get any stronger until we get Red Ring or something like that to buff. Hulkly practicing the special. He's like, you will land triple special special. I mean, when it lands, it's really stupid. A party of, like, Rombars and Cast landing it, they could, like, half this boss's health before it's even visible. It's so dumb. Ooh, I missed my special. That's unfortunate. I think that was a my bad. I, I whiffed special pretty bad there. Her accuracy said no. Oh, so close. Thank you, last one. Oh, the password screen. I was like, what is, what would this play on? Oh, well, such is life. We'll make up for it here, hopefully. Yeah, the big downside with Hugh Neural. Terrible, terrible accuracy growth. Takes forever for her to be decent at high levels. I don't know what they were thinking with that. And because of that, she's like super unit heavy, or hungry, I mean. So she'll need like multiple accuracy just to like function, as opposed to like be good. So we're not quite at the be good phase yet of her. We'll get there eventually. She's now at max ATP at least. The moment she gets Red Ring, she's gonna go from decent to good. And then if we give her Dark Flow, she'll go from good to great. But yeah, that accuracy is so important on her. I think I'm using Kasami Bracer for ATP, so technically Red Ring will cause me to do slightly less damage. But I think the extra 20 accuracy on the harder areas is more important. If I was doing something like Forest, I would actually wear Kasami Bracer for the most part on these kind of characters. Since I don't usually care about my accuracy, I just care about damage. And again, if it doesn't help me hit any important thresholds, it's Red Ring will still be better, like 90% of the scenarios. Rip. No Parasitic Gene Flow. I mean, we could do one more just for Dango, but then what do you want to do after this, Chen? We'll do one more for Dango. <laughs> Trying to improve his odds of getting one. Get rid of these. Yeah, I feel like we're getting a little unlucky in general. I'm starting to fall asleep. Yeah, I'll probably go for like another hour or so. So once we do this, we'll have like 40 minutes, and then I'll take a break. Wow, double S rank! How excited they get every time. Ooh, funky. Two anguish 10 runs? Damn. I 
actually... Is it worth RTing with Anguish 1? Hmm. I'll think about it. Maybe not with this specific party comp. I think I'm gonna try that in the future, though. I mean, I'm kind of at the point where I'm open to just playing TTF with Anguish 1. <laughs> I, I kind of wanted to do that for a while, but I think once I get above 1400 health with the Hue cast, I'll probably just leave it on Anguish 1. He gets so many fast kills. I'll greed for that XP. It makes slime duping easier. Although the downside is if my fire traps are not stronger, I don't kill them as easily. Unless I go for their spawn point. Maybe post red ring, we'll we'll do some anguish runs of those because it's funny. Yeah, I'm guessing they just complained a lot about it. I'm guessing just a lot of boohoo anguish ten. Like I, I don't see why else you would remove something if it was working as is technically. At least I didn't see a stated reason in the patch notes. I know from like a general expectations thing, they were feeling out what would work with the DMC changes. So for example, it was a lot easier to get kills as a group after the damage changes. So anguish was easier after that for a brief period of time. So like I understand from that perspective, if that's what they're looking to go for. I'm just surprised they removed it altogether. I guess they got tired of people doing ruins runs, which is kind of unfortunate. Because I, I feel like box drops are already so terrible. Like, no. Yeah. I'm wondering how much of it was targeted towards the patterns. Because I noticed, too, the patterns were super bad compared to before. So, like, for example, if I had Anguish 5, it would add 1 to each of the patterns and then cycle again. Now it only adds the equivalency you get 2. So it looks super nerfed compared to what it was before, which really sucks. So it means that there's some areas that are just out, like they're, you will just never play them ever again. Which I think it's more unfortunate than not, to be honest with you. So I don't know about chat, but when you're playing with like endgame characters, I don't really want to grind forest. So like it's nice that anguish is there so that I can feel either a little bit of challenge, or because we have so much kill speed, because we're so overgeared anyway, we lose almost no time, if any, and just get free stats. Like, it's definitely not for people that are like 140, barely geared, etc. But like, there's only so many times you can heal the bear attack. That's <laughs> when you're like, I can combo kill them with every character at this point. And that's without sphering properly or doing any of the endgame stuff. So, like, I think Anguish 1 is still somewhat good in some runs. But yeah, it, it looks nerfed. I don't know if the PD rates are nerfed or not. I would have to compare. But patterns look super nerfed compared to what they were before. So they definitely do not want you getting high hit in lower areas. And even in general, it barely adjusts anything. So, for example, if I'm doing seabed runs, it didn't impact it before. Um, I'm not going to see a big difference there. If I was doing something in mines, I don't benefit as much anymore. To the point of it just not being worth it, because it's the minimum anguish 2 instead of being anguish 1. In terms of difficulty. So, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan. I'm happy there's still some anguish, at least. If they remove it altogether, that will definitely expedite me stopping PSO. Because I do a lot of that in private runs. I don't do it so much on stream, since a lot of people are newer. Uh, but I, I do like having that option. I don't want to do, like, tower anguish. But I will do a lot of, like, Tyrell's Ego, anguish 1-2 to two in the old setting. Because I just got bored of just playing regular Tyrell's Ego, where I was clearly way overgeared for it. And at, like, near max level and red ring. So it's like, I don't know. We'll see, I suppose.
I mean, at least there's Restless Lion to get 50 hits. I don't think it impacts, like, the major runs that I do offhand, but it is sad. Because we do sometimes mess around with the Anguish. I think I did Anguish, uh, Anguish 1 Endless. We did a couple times. We like doing cookie runs with Anguish. So if, if they remove it all together, I will be very cross for cookie runs in particular. So we were we were milking that XP on Anguish 1. <laughs> and that's with characters that are still leveling. Yeah, potentially getting like 40 to 50% bonus XP. Ooh, Glitch Teleport. Is like so... So good. I don't think the PD rates super mattered. I didn't really do it for PD rates. But the XP being on par is what I care about. Like, I don't expect item find to generally be better, since you will generally slow the run down unless you're super overgeared. And obviously, if you have any dependency on Freeze Trap, it's just not happening anymore. Yeah, it would have been nice. play Dodge the Poison. I failed the game. Ah. Let's see if we get some pot shots on this thing. There's the glitch. See, sometimes it does that. I don't know what causes that. It just, sometimes it pops up and it instantly goes down. He's supposed to be targetable here, I think, but he's just not going to be for whatever reason. Then he glitches back up. So he actually denies us a lot of opportunity to hit the boss, which kind of sucks. Oh, we almost killed the boss. Oh, barely. We barely killed the boss. So between the two big swings, we did like 8,000 damage. Mixed with the team in that last 200. Somebody tagged it. I don't know who it was, but that saved us a whole cycle, which is good. Blizzard Caliber. Don't really care about that. Uh, ooh. I feel, like, I feel like my position was okay, but my angle was terrible. Let's try this again. Hmm. I think this is fine. As long as I'm, like, very slightly to the right and not left at all, we should be good. <laughs> like that we're just, like, a cluster. Good bartering the, the landing. Yeah, is that actually dead center? Damn, that was pretty close to dead center. That was a good lineup. Everybody won that one, as far as I'm concerned. Three HP. That's so sad. If only she had Red Ring, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> Actually, it still would, because I'm using Kasami. Oh, that's sad. She'll never be able to combo kill that consistently without Sphering. Bonk. Hmm. Yeah, we'll do a couple other things. I don't think the, uh... I don't think the RBR was anything too crazy. I think it was, like, Endless Nightmare 1. Let's see what it is. Which, again, is a lot of forests. So, like, if you're trying to get a Jito or a Red Handgun, which I kind of want... It's not bad. I don't recall enough about Swoop Up Operation 7 and 14. I know 14 has a lot of Gertabulus, but I don't remember the quest that well. There we go. Thank you, Kunai. I remember I remember 14 being very pyro heavy, so like if I wanted a slicer of fanatic, it's not bad. Or not pyro, just regular Goron. It had like 70 or something ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know the episode 2 quest that well, sadly. think about it. I, I probably won't do another stream as this of before this week. I believe there are some weekend plans ahead of me. Unless the weather is really terrible, then maybe I'll consider it. Soundtrack, this one is specifically Bomberman 5 Zone 3. Oops, I shouldn't do that. I should do this.
Oh my gosh, I finally got mag invincibility. Chat, I can hold forward. Bomberman been slapping. Yeah, the, it's it's been pretty solid so far. Elkley made a good call. I was thinking about doing them eventually, and then I was like thinking about it later, and I'm like, you know what? We only really did the NES ones when we were doing uh, retro soundtracks. I think we listened to a little bit of Bomberman 64. That time, that was a clean combo. Oh, that time I did not dodge. But hey, on the plus side, that means I got more meter. So I'm okay with that too, honestly. That's another example where if you just look at a build meter, I guess you could hit, get hit by that on purpose and build like four meter. Rather than dodge it, as long as you don't mind resting. I mean, it's probably about as efficient as Chainsaw, to be honest. Mazer Beam, oh no. Forward man, something like that. Yeah, I'm just trying to feel what I'm in the mood for if chat doesn't have a quest. So I think I am TTF'd and RT'd out for the moment. A 50 hit spirit ray gun. I guess that's worth picking up. It's 50 hit. It sadly came with no percentages. I guess I could give that to a new player. Better than nothing. <laughs> I'm half wondering if I do want to just go back to very hard blue ID or something stupid. Rare Week does benefit the uh, very hard mode run there for Heaven Striker coats as well as Photon Crystals. And also technically the chance of getting an Ignition Cloak. The 57 meter. Red, yellow, white. Um... Probably red or white. White is good in more general runs. Red, like, it's probably between red or white. Yellow's not bad. I do like, I do like it. I just don't know if I consider it more poor. I think those are both really, all of them are really strong IDs. It just depends on what you want to do with them. So like red and white, for example, would be able to do red ring runs. Red is slightly more beginner friendly and ranger oriented. You're going to get things like cannon rouge. You're gonna get things like Heaven Striker. White ID has like I would mm, I guess I would do White ID not on the phone then. White ID is really good on like Ranger. If you're able to do episode two, White ID is insanely good, and it's also still really good in episode one. But I feel like the only characters that could really do that successfully are probably probably Rangers. White ID episode four is also potentially really strong, but they don't have like they don't have, like, as enticing runs. Like, they could get things like Limiter slash Adip, which is really good. But most of their items are more focused on, like, can I get Diska, Brave Man? Can I get 13? Which, again, really good. Like, but it's something I'd probably prefer to put on a Hunter, maybe? Like, a Cast Hunter, like Qcast? Or I would just straight up pick Ranger on White ID. Because that's something where I, like, I can abuse that for boss runs. Both in Episode 1 and Episode 4. Although, as I said before, most of the time you're not going to do a lot of Episode 4 boss runs. They're, they're okay. But I, I don't think they're as strong as, like, Yellow ID. If you were purely only doing Episode 4, I think Yellow ID is either Excalibur or Daylight Scar. I always get them confused between Yellow and Orange, since they both are uber rares that you were interested in, in general. But I remember opening up to a bit because it had some overall strong drops. It might be like Galatine is one of the yellow drops. I forget offhand. I'll double check in, in a moment. <laughs> we'll let team kill these things. That's fun. Yellow ID gets... Galatine Daylight Scar. My bad. I was confusing that with orange. I'm already at 71 meters, so I'm good for the... I'm good for now.
So like that that run by itself is pretty good. So like it's it's not the worst. The downside with like yellow ID is that they don't do boss runs. And most of their stronger ones, like Terrell's Eco is okay to do as force. But things like ruins are kinda hard for forces to clear without like super strong end game items, especially in multiplayer. I had a lot of fun with Rockcast as yellow ID. And I have a force separately for episode four. So yeah, I would probably lean a little more towards red, maybe? But again, I, I would have to think about it in context of your other IDs. Eventually, you're gonna need one of every- not every ID, but you're gonna need at least, like, four IDs, I think, to get coverage. And then you'll find that you like certain runs with certain characters more than others. So you'll have, like, probably a dedicated green, red, and maybe orange or yellow at some point, if you're- if you like episode four with forces. Or if you're doing a lot of tower, you're gonna need purple and or white, because both of them are really good at endgame drops. And things like green have things like Heaven Striker and some decent other rares going through, and that's like kind of a solid second or third ID. Nicely done. But yeah, sadly, if you want to find everything, it's good. I would say no matter what, no matter what, I think you will find an area you can hunt. All three of them have really solid episode four, and that's mostly what Phone Newman cares about. Phone Newman's okay at like uh, Temple episode two. They're okay at it. But you don't really want to be doing like spaceship runs, for example, with them. You don't really want to be doing CCA with them. They're fine with like caves and forests. I think most of them are pretty solid there. Current plan is to cast Sky. Okay. I'm not sure I like Sky ID and Hue cast. I just kind of did it. I guess this just, just depends on how badly you want Seal J Sword. Ramar, Purple Numb. I do like Ranger. Pur I do like Purple Ranger a lot. Yeah. I also, also, I'm gonna have to give it slightly to Red Force. I think, because if you're still leveling mags, uh, Fomar, thank you, Daddy, for show for subscribing. Appreciate it. Uh, Red Force gives, uh, Nidra. I call my Fomar that all the time. So male force would be able to make Nidra easily. So, for example, I have a Green Ranger plus Red Force was how I made all my initial mags. Because those two IDs will cover you. And green ID is a really fantastic one for Ranger in particular. Um, but I'm not going to argue if it's better than purple. Because I think purple does beat it in a lot of the late game runs. But being able to do like a green ID miracle run or other things is pretty nice. I forgot that doorway block shots. It's so stupid. Yeah, I've got to build a little more meter here. I'm only at 85. I'm gonna take some time to hit the box here. It's actually important that I do so. Let Team Cake take care of the Sinos. I'm gonna try to shoot these for meter. See, I'm at 91. Not bad. So this time I'm gonna make sure not to touch the door. I think I accidentally touched the door before. So to make sure everybody's close to being in sync, this is probably where I don't want to go too far ahead. So we're going to turn here, and then we're going to go Foey right about now-ish. That should stop the charge. Indeed it did. So even without a freeze trap, it's pretty consistent. Easy kill and Del Beaters. Yeah, the thing is, is like, I think solo... Force, force is fine in solo and ruins. You want to make sure your core items are not in mines, they're not in tower, unless you plan on hosting and supporting, like, purely a support role. And you want to make sure that it's generally not episode 2 bosses, unless you are, again, hosting a lot of powerful people. If you're expecting to be able to solo, like, a boss rush in, like, respect of tomorrow or something with a force, you're going to be disappointed. I think they do okay at jungle clear, so that's why I think, like, pink force isn't the worst. 
because at least they can very easily hell kill everything there. Because jungle has probably the most hellable targets. So that's why I think they are pretty good there, potentially. Nice, we're at max meter, so I don't need to build any more meter. Need to help clear the room a little bit, though. Yeah, I think that's a mostly solid plan. The only downside is that Ramar might be a little awkward to level because he doesn't have any, like, critical quests. But ultimately, he's probably going to be able to tackle things that... You know, most... Oh, I touched the laser gate by accident. That was my bad. I shoot a couple of these. I thought I didn't touch it, but I, it, I must have touched it. Yeah, I have my raw moral as purple, and she was able to basically do all my tower hunts. I think that was fun. And she's okay at episode four. I would say the thing too is that rangers, rangers are basically the answer to wh where am I good basically everywhere. I would say Ramar has a bit of a weakness in mines until you get really good equipment. So it feels really bad if he has to farm like Sinnohs early, for example. That feels absolutely miserable. But if his favorite hunts are like ruins, caves, temple, anywhere in episode 2, he doesn't care. So having like Ramar slash Ramaro for solo play for those, it's very easy to do. The other thing that Purple's probably best known for is uh, doing Lily. So having having a dress plate character that's able to get immune to Lily makes if you want to do Psycho Wand a lot easier. So generally if you have like a Phonumen, Raw Cast, or Ramar, you could clear caves super super fast with Purple ID and still be immune to everything. That's pretty fast. We got here like 20 seconds earlier th than normal. Worth it. <laughs> I wonder if it's because the dragon landing on people, just building enough meter. It does save a lot of time. Like, you lose half a second of resta. But we have to wait anyway. Hard Vulcan for sure. Yeah, it's, Sky ID I think is fine, like, Surface, Surface is not hard for Hue Cast. You can basically burst everything, traps are very powerful in Episode 4. Uh, I do like meleeing a lot there, mech guns are pretty solid. Uh, episode 1 they could get Red Ring, so they could do Boss Rush. And I guess if you're only doing hunts for Seal J, it's not the worst with Hue Cast. At least you have some damage. Ooh, barely, barely squeezed that damage out. Good job, team. Ooh, I was worried because I missed two out of three shots on my sacrifice or on my charge move. I managed to get one extra attack more than normal, and I was like, ooh, team covered me there. Thank you, team. Yeah, I think it also gives Hugh Cast an alternate means of leveling, which is good. So I, I would say for the most part, it's probably it's probably fine with them. They don't have to worry about underground rares, because I can't really think of anything in Sky that I would ever really hunt underground. But there's a lot of easy kills with like Dwarfon, for example, where uh, they just get absolutely curb stomped by Hue Cast. So it's like, I would much rather be Hue Cast Sky ID than like Hue World, for example, who I feel is terrible. I, I regret having her as like the blue ID limiter. Although I have fun with her here, at least. So sadly, she was not designed with the IDs in mind. She was just a, I like a color, I'm gonna name a character after a color, the character will be designed after the color. That is the philosophy of this character. There's no meta about which one it should have been. If I had to redo it, I probably would have made her... maybe Viridian or something? I think she does okay in some areas, and I think in episode two she does fine-ish. Yeah, no, no TTF is sad. 171 XP a second. 
New New World meta is lame plus limiter unlocker. You're not wrong. But yeah, I just don't prefer her over the other choices. Like, even for very hard mode, I wouldn't pick Hunu Rule. I think now that she has, like, Dark Flow potential, like, now I definitely want to bring her into bosses, but I feel like she took so much longer to come online compared to other characters versus bosses. Like, forces have a little trouble with bosses in the sense that, like, Ball Op is a problem if you don't have ATP, and he ends up being a big time waste, but then in, like, single player, you kill Falls really easily, because you could just hit the boss full screen. So you just switch between, like, Bringer's Arm, or some equivalency, and, uh... Foey. Yeah... She just, like, if she had more ATP, I think she would have done a little better. But it's like, comparatively, like, I would 100% rather play Hugh Cassiel into Episode 4 over her as well. The ability to confuse Trap and Freeze Trap is just so huge. And her accuracy on Hugh Cassiel is insane, so I can actually land the ridiculous shots. This character is just okay. Again, I was kind of led to believe she was going to be a very strong solo character, and for the most part, she hasn't been. I would just rather play Hugh Cast, Rock, well, Rock Cast in some areas, and things like that. And definitely for multiplayer, I prefer the casts. But she's not bad. Like, if you're going forceless, she's okay in, like, episode 4. But even in that scenario, I'd rather have Romoral in, like, the same exact scenario. 